welcome those of you just joining us. Ninth ranked USC and number one Notre Dame. Jim Nance along with Pat Hayden and John Dockery. We are two minutes and 13 seconds into this contest and USC has just scored. Notre Dame received the opening kickoff and Rocket, Ragib Ismail, fumbled the opening kickoff. The ball was jarred loose at the 40. Todd Morenovich, the quarterback for the Trojans, then marched his team eight plays, 40 yards, and a touchdown pass moments ago to Larry Wallace. Alabama won that game 47-30. Over Tennessee. And Jim, here is the touchdown that Barinovich threw to Wallace. Two plays earlier, they had thrown this same pattern. The blitz inside picked up well, the post pattern. He was open on both plays. The earlier he let him too much, that ball was well thrown. And I think you have to be a tall quarterback to be able to throw this pass. It's a short post pattern. He is 6'4". He gets the ball all the, over the tall hands. Watch the protection here. Number 75, Tucker, is right there. The ball is well thrown. He led the receiver. And then the emotion of the freshman quarterback, Mernovich. He's a big kid, six foot four, and you said all week he was born to play in this game. Well, in 1962, his father played against uh, the Fighting Irish, beat them 25 to nothing. His uncle, Craig Furtick, in 1964, was a quarterback who led uh, led them to a win over the number one ranked Fighting Irish. Here's the kick. It's smile again. He's got a hole. the last man and he bumped them out after a 57 yard return. Ismail is amazing and what he does, he doesn't waste any time. Every good kick returner just takes off and doesn't dance around in the hole. Picks up a couple of blocks. Bellas, number eight, gave him a nice block. Eilers, number 13, gave him a block. He outruns the kicker and then only number 19, Peace, Pace, who made the stop. But watch the hole on the right side. What Notre Dame does, Jim, is put their 10 best blockers on their kickoff return team. So the first play from scrimmage for number one Notre Dame. Waters and Johnson in the backfield. Rice keeps it. Rice gets to the 31 yard line. A gain of eight. Let's meet Notre Dame. Tony Rice, the senior quarterback. Joined in the backfield by Anthony Johnson who has scored 10 touchdowns this year and Ricky Waters. Eilers and Ismail are the receivers. Rice last year broke one 65 yards. The first score of the game against Southern Cal for a touchdown. Second and short. Anthony Johnson has the first down and rumbles to the 25 yard line. Mark Carrier, Delmar Chesley made the tackle. Up front for Southern Cal, Dan Owens is the nose tackle. Tim Ryan, Randy Hoare are on that line. Linebacker Scott Ross, Delmar Chesley, Michael Williams, and Junior Seau. A great one for the other linebackers. First and ten for Lou Holtz at Notre Dame. Running the option, Rice keeps again. In the secondary and down to the 17-yard line. Another gain of eight. Our carrier cut him under. What Lou Holtz likes to do early in every ball game is just feel out the defense. First he lines up and sees how he's going to get deep at some point in the game. Then he sees how he's going to defend the option and then formations and then some wishbone. And if you can't defend any of those, he'll keep coming back to it. Notre Dame's offensive line, Mike Helt is the center. A pair of Tims at guard, Tim Ryan, Tim Brunhard, and the tackles, Mike Brennan, Dean Brown. Derek Brown is the tight end, sophomore from Florida. Tim Ryan on the offensive line for Notre Dame, and a Tim Ryan at defensive tackle for USC. Second will call it three. Johnson, as he does so often, bulldozes his way for the first down. Let's the opening kick, Pat, 
USC kick to Ismail. And they kicked it very high. He caught the ball on about the 25-yard line. He was hit there, and Larry Smith, the head coach, had challenged his return teams against Ismail and said they were going to defend against him. But here is the touchdown, the post pattern to number 82, Larry Wallace. Good protection. The tall quarterback at 6'4 is able to get the ball over the outstretched arms of the Irish defense. Tulio had made the fumble recovery. It's 7-0 USC. Notre Dame threatening. First and 10, Ismail running from the tailback spot, gets to the 11. USC always, traditionally, great in the backfield. It's defensive backfield. And they today bring out Dwayne Garner, Ernest Spears, and a pair of safeties, Cleveland Coulter and Mark Carrier. And it's going to be really like a one-on-one -on -one game between Mark Carrier and the quarterback, Tony Rice. He has a responsibility in the option plays to go to the quarterback to the pitch man. So Carrier versus Rice. Tony Smith at the bottom of your screen, Ismail in a slot left, Waters back at tailback, second and seven for Notre Dame. Option left, Rice keeps, pitches late, Waters has it, and gets to the six yard line, call it the seventh. Last second pitch by Tony Rice. There's a lot of different ways that Tony Rice can beat you. Sometimes say he, some people say he doesn't throw the ball with great accuracy, but his plays like this, what really should have been a negative play, a four-yard loss. He breaks right through the tackle and then makes a late pitch to Ricky Waters. There was only a hustling play there by Chesley, number 53, that prevented the touchdown, but that's a great play there by Tony Rice. That pitch went right past the extended arm of Michael Williams. It's third down for the Irish inside of the 10. Rice still has it. Touchdown, Notre Dame. Took just a little more than three minutes to counter USC's touchdown. Hendrick can tie it with the extra point. 7-7 seven, seven, with nine minutes and ten seconds left in the first quarter. Jim, the sign of a good football team is a team that overcomes some adversity. Notre Dame had fumbled on the opening kickoff, USC scored, but they came right back in their first possession. Good penetration there. Tony Rice it took the ball away from the fullback, and then it was just determined to just fought his way into the end zone. And then the emotion of head coach Lou Holtz. He knows how important this game is. We saw the emotions that erupted prior to this game. And now we've really just started. And it's already 7-7. USC and Notre Dame. Let's take another look at the Tony Rice touchdown. The eyes of Tony Rice this time. He saw the pressure there by the outside linebacker, Sayo, number 55. He took the ball right out of the fullback's stomach. And then the power, the strength, and the determination. That's what makes Tony Rice have won 18 games in a row. He and his team. That's the first rushing touchdown this year allowed by USC as Hendricks kick goes out of bounds. Todd Marinovich, we spoke with him yesterday. He wanted to come out here and have success quickly to try to quiet this capacity crowd. Fighting that crowd as soon as I can. That's the most fun thing about playing away is everyone's all fired up at kickoff and going in and uh, marching right down the field and scoring. Uh, you can hear a pin drop. And that's what I want to hear after we get the ball. Well, he was three for six on that opening possession, including the touchdown pass. It's really amazing as a as a freshman you talk to the Southern Cal coaches this week here is a guy starting his first Southern Cal Notre Dame game and yet they are they are counting actually counting on him winning this game for them all task for a young man ever since a, a victory in the fourth game of the season against Washington State he has played with extreme confidence 
has not thrown an interception in his last 93 passes. You know, the Southern Cal coaches did a nice job, Jim, of bringing him along slowly. In their first game against Illinois, they didn't ask much of him, but as each week has gone on, they've asked more and more of Marinovich as he's thrown the ball downfield. Back-to-back, -back, huge wins by the Texas Longhorns, Coach David McWilliams. He was getting some heat down in Austin, and that certainly will cool things off after a victory last week against Oklahoma, and now today, handing Arkansas its first loss of the year. Texas football back. Here's the return. It's Bruce Luisi, backup tailback, returning it to the 37-yard line. Let's get another report from John Dockery and this about the fight prior to the game. John? Jim, let me tell you exactly what happened. Notre Dame lined up after the warm-ups along the goal line here. USC was running off the field, and they challenged USC to go around them. Of course, players in their frame of mind before the game wouldn't do that. It became a challenge. USC couldn't get directly to the tunnel. Pushing and shoving broke out, and then some players went down. They were kicked. There were blows thrown. Actually, Lou Holtz was hit and went to the ground, too. I'll have more in a minute, Jim. All right, Doc. First to 10, Marinovich rolling and throwing. Jackson threw his hands, and Todd Light saw the end zone for a moment. From one to one, number one, John Jackson off his fingertips. Todd Light, number one, almost raced it back. Well, Todd Light, number one, has had a sensational year thus far with the five interceptions. He's got great confidence as he plays the wide side of the field. Number one, Todd Light, plays, always plays to the field, and he's great at reading patterns. You see his, where his head is? His eyes are looking right inside of the cornerback. He reads the pattern and steps up to make the play. Second down at 10, Holt, the lone setback. Renovich going long. And over the head of John Jackson. Matt Terrell was in the secondary on him. USC is two and four against Notre Dame when the Irish have been ranked number one. 25 years ago, Pat, you spoke about it earlier. Craig Furtick in the final two minutes threw a touchdown pass to Rod Sherman as USC came back from 17 to nothing to win over number one Notre Dame. That's 25 years ago. Third and 10. Kowalkowski races him out of there. Irvin's, Irvin's changing direction and might be a yard short of the first. Well, they bill him as a slashy, gutsy type runner, and he made some great moves to get near the first down. When you run a screen pass, you want to drop back, but I think Brinovich really gave this screen away by dropping back a little bit too far. He's scrambling back, and all of a sudden, I think the defense felt the screen a little bit or earlier than they ordinarily would, but Ricky Irvin did a great job of making a lot of guys miss. Now they spot it at the 45. It's fourth and two. Mark Preston will punt for USC. They use two punters. Ismail is back deep. It's a short punt. Ismail fumbles, and it's caught in the air. Caught in the air by USC's Junior Seau. There is a flag down near midfield. The recovery near the 15, a knee went down. And Jim, I gotta tell you, there is a lot of wind out there, and that is what happened. The ball is swirling around. I was talking to kickers and punt receivers before the game. The holding call against Notre Dame. It'll be USC football at the 15-yard line. Now, Ismail returned a punt for a touchdown last week, but that was just misjudged. It was misjudged because the ball was swirling. It hit his shoulder pads, and then Junior Seau was there to make the play. Again, Larry Smith, all week long, has stressed coverage on kickoffs and punt returns against Ragib Ismail. Well, that's two turnovers by the Rockets here in the first quarter. The first one had really nothing to do with the wind. Right. This one was right. a judgment error with the wind. And remember that the game a year ago, really the difference was the four turnovers by Southern Cal. And thus far, Notre Dame has two in the first period. Wellman to the right, Jackson to the left. First and 10, USC. Morenovich 
Looking Jackson's way. Now will throw short. Really just dumping it off, getting rid of it. Jackson was in the area. Bob Dole putting pressure on Marinovich. Now Marinovich plays with a nonchalance of a much older player. He is only a freshman. You're not going to see him take many sacks, and he does not throw interceptions. That's really ordinarily the sign of a much older player. We're talking about that big win against Washington State. He came back, and the Gipper, Ronald Reagan, made a phone call to him and said that was one of the most exciting comebacks I've ever seen. 18-17 victory. Marinovich throwing for a two-point conversion in the final seconds. Here he goes to Jackson. Jackson slashes in for the touchdown for USC. Second touchdown pass of the quarter for Todd Marinovich. This one covering 15 yards. We're midway through the opening quarter, and it's already 13 to 7. Three touchdowns. Rodriguez will attempt the extra point for the Trojans. And the men of Troy lead it 14 to 7. Jimmy, I think left-handed quarterbacks can sometimes fool you. They look like they're lobbing the ball and lobbing the ball, but next thing you know, you look up and the receiver has the ball right in front of you. This ball is a frozen roll. He gets it over the tall hands, and then Jackson does a nice job of not dancing around. He goes right to the goal line, split the seam between Lott and Terrell, late and Terrell as he got into the end zone to make it 14-7. Charismatic John Jackson, the all-time receiver at USC. He has dedicated this season to his grandmother, Elizabeth Jackson. She passed away in August. He has a towel. The towel is on his front side. It says EJ. That's for his grandmother. And he said he wanted to score a touchdown today in her memory. I give thanks to the Lord because I know through him, um, all the things that are possible and everything that I achieve is given to me from him. So um, when I cross the goal line, I give thanks to the Lord and thank of my grandmother. Boy, I tell you, did a great job of just getting the ball into the end zone in between the two defenders there, Jimmy. Didn't dance around, didn't waste any time, just took the ball upfield. A remarkable young man, an academic All-American, plays baseball on the Southern Cal baseball team. And Leading hitter on the baseball team for USC. He graduated, John Jackson, in May with a 3.3 grade point average, taking courses toward an MBA. Jim, USC has kicked the ball off twice already this game, and both times it has been eventful. On the first kickoff, his smile fumbled the ball. On the second kickoff, it was a short kick, and it brought it back about 57 yards. Well, the wind is gusting. For Rodriguez. He just lines it, drives it out of bounds, never touched. So it'll be a five yard penalty. We've got an update. Big day for the Texas Longhorns. With more on that, let's take it back to Greg Gumbel. Well, Jim, the happy face on the man going up belongs to David McWilliams, the head coach of the Texas Longhorns, who are now in charge in the Southwest Conference at 3-0 after upsetting seventh-ranked Arkansas today. You will recall last week the Longhorns knocked off the Oklahoma Sooners. Let's go back to South Bend. You know, if you take it back one week prior to that, Texas struggled at home against Rice, beat the Owls only 31 to 30, but have come back with two huge victories. I think Texas is actually going to be a team next year as well, Jim, that's going to be strong. It is a young team that David Williams, McWilliams, is trying to groom for next year's Southwest Conference race as well. I believe he has only 12 seniors on his 90-man roster. Marcus Hopkins will hold the ball on the tee for Rodriguez. Ismail is standing at the 14-yard line. Midway, first quarter, 14-7 Trojans. Another kick going toward the sidelines. Culver catches it but falls down at the 27. Rodney Culver. Next week on CBS Sports, we'll follow the Crimson Tide on its journey to State College, Pennsylvania. 
take on the Penn State Nittany Lions. Penn State opened its year with a loss against Virginia, but has come back with five straight victories. A similar script to USC with the opening loss to Illinois, but have since, the Trojans have since mounted five wins as well. First and ten. Notre Dame, three receivers. Waters lining up as a receiver, but Rice looks instead for Derrick Brown, and it's batted down. That was the first pass by Rice. Chesley batted it down, intended for Derrick Brown. So Jim, I think Chesley might have intercepted that ball, but I believe it was Junior Seau who tipped the ball away from him. It looked like it might have been tipped. William Pollard has come in for the Irish. He's number 82. Second down and 10. Only one other team has had a lead this year on the Irish. That was Stanford. Six to nothing. Rice looking for Pollard and overthrown at the 47-yard line. Double coverage, Spears and Carrier. Ernest Spears and Martin Carrier. Ernest Spears, number three, did a very nice job of covering number 82, Pollard, underneath. Spears, number three, is there corner who's a physical guy can pass the speed to play it deep but is a tough physical guy who come up and support on the run make plays on tackles third and ten milers and ismail the receivers rice tuck it in and will go out of bounds michael williams pushed them out notre dame will punt and they will punt into a very brisk win, Jim. Greg Hendrick is the Notre Dame punter and place kicker. They won the job in the early weeks of the season, and he's only a freshman, Hendrick, out of Godfrey, Illinois. First team high school All-America last year. That is Wallace standing back for the return. Snap back from Grunhard. Hendrick gets a good one away. Wallace will let it bounce. He retreats and the ball rests at the 24-yard line. The Trojans leading over the Irish. Ranked number one, 14-7 in the first. USC 14 to 7. You know, for the second time in less than a month, we've seen the devastation and loss brought about by a natural disaster. This week, our hearts go out to the people of Northern California. We have watched and shared and your ordeal, and we know that a staggering amount of work lies ahead in order to restore life to normal. Fortunately, many fine agencies are actively providing relief and assistance. Should you at home care to help, may we suggest that you check your local newspapers for the appropriate support agency in your area. We've been following that miraculous story today with Leslie Stahl and CBS News. You know, we sometimes loosely use the word miraculous or miracle in sports. That should never be confused with what we saw today coming out of Oakland. Truly a miracle. On first and ten, Holt for two. Let's get more now on what happened before the game. Let's go back to John Dockery. You know, Jim, USC's been playing with an incredible amount of emotion. Part of that emotion was unleashed before the game in that big pre-game pre brawl. Shades of Miami last year, only this was more serious. It lasted a couple of minutes, and what precipitated it? Well, like last year against Miami, Notre Dame lined up in the end zone as USC was coming off the field. They blocked their entrance to the locker room. The USC players started, didn't like it. They started bumping one another, and then a full-scale brawl broke out. Punches were thrown. Players were on the bleaches. Lou Holtz was hit and went down. He's okay. So this was a... Oh, yes, Jim. Do you have a question for me? I was going to say, Doc, you were right down in the middle of this one, though, weren't you? I was right behind it and witnessed it, and half of the USC team had gone into the locker room. They came back out of the locker room to help their teammates. Security cards came out. One security card from guard from uh, policeman from L.A. was hit in the eye. He had an ice pack on it. 
Stewart. Another was hit in the mouth. In the locker room, Larry Smith was concerned. He did not want to be in the tunnel before the game with Notre Dame. He asked to come out separately as he did. That's part of the reason I think you see USC with this much emotion today. They feel they don't get respect from Notre Dame when they come here. Jim? All right, Doc. It's second down and eight. Marinovich complete. And a helmet flies. Galbraith holds on. Doc was talking about respect, but you talk to the players and people associated with this game. This series has really been one treated with reverence through the years. It has not been a heated or a hatred between the schools, but we really saw it erupt today. Uncharacteristic at that. I really believe it is, because I think there's great respect for both institutions and both football teams. Third down. Third down and four. Pitch. Irvins, first down USC to the 42-yard line, a gain of 12. Smagava made the tackle. You know, a clever call there by Southern Cal. They will not run many option plays, maybe five or six during the course of the game. But this one fooled the Notre Dame defense. In a third and short situation, there's nobody there on the pitch man. Murnovich gets hit. You don't think of a big, tall quarterback as a great option quarterback, and he's not going to really beat you with his feet, but he can beat you with his mind as he did right there as he flipped the ball outside to Ricky Irvins. Talking about respect, Irvins said this week, I don't feel I get much respect as a tailback. What do you think of him, Pat? Well, he's a very tough inside runner. As you see him bounce here off tackle, and what he does, Jim, for about a three or four yard gain, he, he finds a little crease, finds a little hole. It's like a pinball. He'll bounce off people. He runs real low to the ground until he finds that crease, and then he'll pop through it. He's the leading rusher in the Pac-10, Irvins, and he's had, through six games, four of them, He's eclipsed the 100-yard rushing figure. Play selection, 3-1, to one, passing for the Trojans to this point. 4-1, to one, Notre Dame running. Well, Southern Cal wants to throw the ball early and run and hammer the ball in the fourth quarter. Notre Dame will run the ball and beat you with the option. Second and six, Scott comes in as the third receiver. Marinovich with time now flushed out finds a man Holt on his back makes the catch in Notre Dame territory at the 39 yard line a gain of 15. What a terrific adjustment by Leroy Holt he is a fullback you don't think of fullbacks as great receivers he's 225 pounds that's his 15th catch of the year and what he does the ball thrown over the wrong shoulder he gets the left paw out there and makes a terrific adjustment real soft hands for a big man. Holt last week rushed for a career high 160 yards against Cal. First and 10. Urban's the lone setback, takes the ball to the 36-yard line, tackled by Zorich. Chris Zorich, number 50, I believe is the best nose tackle in all of America. What he does is he's so good he can make plays in the backfield, he can make plays at the line of scrimmage, but then he'll hustle downfield and make plays in defensive secondary as well. He does not stay blocked. Even if you block him early, he still makes the play. Grew up in Chicago, went to the same high school as Dick Buckus did Zorich. Second down play. Marinovich going long, no one there. Picked off Terrell. Picked off by Pat Terrell. His fourth interception of the year at the 11-yard line. When we were talking to Pat Terrell this week, and he said, I get a feel for a quarterback early in the game. I watch his eyes, and I know within two series if I'm going to pick off a ball. And it was the pressure, really, that made Marinovich overthrow it. It was Ned Bolkar, the inside linebacker, number 47, who comes right up the middle of the defense. Pure determination, refuses to stay blocked, forces Marinovich to throw the ball high, and Pat Terrell, the free safety, picks it off. Good team defense, Jim. Well, Dockery drew the parallel to last year's Miami game. By the way, this one started Terrell was the key figure in that contest. First and 10, Anthony Johnson runs to the 15. Terrell last year against Miami, Pat, did it all. Yeah, Terrell down in the corner. Remember, he knocked the two-point play away down in the corner of the end zone. So he's been 
well documented has been a major contributor to last year's national championship team. How tough a transition was it for Terrell, do you believe? Formerly a quarterback in high school, a wide receiver for the Irish two years ago. I think all those moves have helped him as a free safety. He knows the position of quarterback as he played his own, and he knows the wide receiver position, and he reads patterns particularly well at free safety. Second and six for the offense. And Rice again faking in the line and then darting off right guard. Past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Ross and Williams combine on the tackle. That's near the first down. And it is a first down for the Irish. You know, Tony Rice always has that look in his eye, that look of passion for the game of football and, and then the feel for competition. And there he did a, just a nice job of reading the block of Tim Grunhard, number 75, ran off the block and picked up the first down. But Tony Rice has a terrific feel for the game of college football, a sense of where he is in the field. Uh, he's 22 and 2 as a starter in his career at Notre Dame. On first and 10, Ricky Waters running up the middle near another first down. It'll be about a yard short at the 30. And what a terrific block by Anthony Johnson, the fullback. Number 22, Anthony Johnson is the unsung hero on this team. Watch as he blocks number 53, Delmar Cheslin. And that's why that hole opened up. Anthony Johnson can beat you running the football, catching the football, or as he did right there, blocking. Ricky Waters butting heads with Cleveland Coulter at the 30-yard line to make it second and one. We'll call it second and two, actually. And in the line goes Johnson for the first down. You know, you look at Notre Dame's offense and you think of Tony Rice and Rocky Ismail, but I think this offense really does start with Anthony Johnson. And Tim Grunhard, the guard, told me this week, he said, hey, we've adopted him as an as a, as a lineman because he does such a great job of blocking, and he's a terrific inside runner. It's quite a tribute to be yeah. adopted by the line. Yeah, very affectionate term, and they don't let too many backs uh, with that group. First and ten. Two minutes left in the first quarter, 14-7, USC. Again in the line, up the middle. It's Rodney Culver with the carry. Culver, a sophomore from Detroit, picks up a yard. Today, with the Russian defense, Chris Allen, defensive coordinator from Southern Cal, said we will finally be tested on the ground today. He thought their season average was misleading because Southern Cal has played primarily passing teams. He said, we'll find out what kind of rushing defense we have today against the Fighting Irish. And when they didn't play passing teams, they got such a big jump on the opponent that they forced them to pass. Like Ohio State, they blew out the Buckeyes. Second and eight, Rice dancing around, thought to pitch, kept it instead. I think that was wise. Tulio, Brian Tulio makes the tackle. He's the man who recovered the opening kickoff, the fumble. Well, that was great team defense there by Southern Cal because when you run the option play, you got to take the fullback away first and then Rice on the option and then the pitch man. And Southern Cal's defense took all three of those players away. Third and ten. Tulio dropping Rice for a two-yard loss. Here comes Seau. Seau sacks him at the 26. Talked about John Jackson dedicating his season to his deceased grandmother. Seau has a story of his own, Pat. Watch Junior Seau on the left of the screen. He gets right on the corner of Dean Brown. And when a pass rusher gets on the corner of a blocker, it's all over. And that's what happened. Got on the corner, ran right around him, and Tony Rice never saw him. Loss of nine on the play. Seau, the cousin of Salinesi. Quarterback, Colorado, who passed away in September. Dedicated the season in Anessi's memory. Hendricks kick to Wallace. And Wallace with only a three-yard return. 46-yard punt. Three-yard return, first and ten for USC from its own 30. 
It is now time to present this week's Toyota Leadership Award to team players who have been singled out by their school's coaching and faculty staff for outstanding performance in the areas of team contributions, academics, and citizenship. Today's game team leadership winners are Don Grimm from Notre Dame. Don is a marketing major from Scottsdale, Pennsylvania. And John Jackson from Southern Cal. John, finance major, graduated in the spring, taking MBA courses. He's from Diamond Bar, California. Toyota donates a check in the amount of $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund. Holding by the receiving team in advance of the line of scrimmage. This will be a post-scrimmage kick foul. Penalty is enforced from the end of the kick. It'll be first down and 10. Well, the ball is back now to the 20-yard line after the holding infraction. Nine seconds left in the first quarter. Two Todd Marinovich touchdown passes, and it's 14-7 USC. Marinovich, before that INT, had thrown 102 straight passes without being picked off. Irvins. Irvins picking up good yardage. A gain of 12 to the 32. That's the end of the first quarter. Well, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Let's see. They'll, they'll stop the clock, of course, on the first down. Ricky Irvin, we talked earlier, Jim, does a real nice job of just bouncing off people. It's like kind of a pinball machine. Well, they stopped the clock momentarily, put it back into play, and that's the end of the first quarter. Exciting one it was. USC leading at 14 to 7. College football on CBS Sports returns after this message and a word from your local station. In the arena, known as Notre Dame Stadium. <laughs> Notre Dame has won the last six meetings. That's the longest streak in this series history. However, it's USC dropping the bomb on the Irish in the first quarter, leading 14 to seven. You know, Lou Holtz was concerned about his pass defense a week ago. Air Force, a wishbone team, threw for over 300 yards. And thus far today, Todd Brnovich has done a nice job of getting the ball upfield. He has first and 10 from his own 32-yard line. Double tight end set. Running with Irvins. He cuts back to the middle, gets to the 36-yard line. Tackled by Bolkar. Clemson trying to avenge three years of frustrations against North Carolina State and leading by two touchdowns. I believe that score out of the SEC today, part one of our doubleheader, 47 wow, to 30. Well, Gary Hollingsworth has done a nice job for the tie this year, hasn't he? He really has. Stepping in. It's second and five. Marinovich steps forward, picks up the first. Well, Todd Marinovich has got some nice foot speed. You don't think of the guy as a real runner, but he ordinarily can just kind of move around and buy himself a little bit more time. But now you're going to see some actual real good foot speed. A nice pass rush by Polakowski, number 37. And then he gets upfield, knows where the marker is, and then get down. Yeah, he scrambles for 10 and all. And a first down. You know, he was really raised to play in games like this. He opened a very regimented training background. His father is a, an athletic trainer. Started stretching exercises when he was a month old. First and 10 pass completion. Near another first down. It is a first down in Notre Dame territory. And it's Gary Wellman with the reception. And Jim, there's that situation with the left-handed thrower again. You think you have a guy covered, and you, and you, it looks like he's lobbing the ball. But the ball gets in there, and it's well easy to catch because it's right in the numbers. It was good coverage there. There were three blue jerseys around, but the ball was easily caught because it was thrown right in Wellman's chest. Gary Wellman, a junior from Westlake Village, California. 
First and ten, Trojans marching again in Notre Dame territory. Holt, met at the line. Jeff Holm came in first. And then he was met by others, you know, Jim, including Volkar. Jim, this has been an interesting year for redshirt freshman quarterbacks around the country. Of course, Marinovich being one of them. But Van Pelt at Pitt has done a great job. Garcia up at Washington State. Of course, Marinovich we're seeing today. Toretta at Miami, who will start against Florida State next week. And then Gray back of Michigan. He used to say freshmen couldn't play. It's no longer true. Well, he set out last year, took snaps, practice, and everything, but redshirted. So he's a redshirt freshman. Morenovich has Jackson at the 16, trying to spin away from Todd Light, but he's tackled right there. A gain of 24 to John Jackson. What happens here is John Jackson is the inside man. He is in motion, number one. He is going to run the out cut, fake the out, the man in motion, and then turn upfield. And then number one runs upfield and nice touch in between the defenders. It zips the ball in between the corner and in front of the safety. And again, that's a tough throw for a left-handed quarterback as he is rolling to his right. John Jackson's third catch for 50 yards and one touchdown. First and 10 Trojans. Irvins wrestled down by Bob Dahl. He got him from behind. Ball's at the 15-yard line. And this is an important defensive series for the Fighting Irish. Here's where, with 12-07 remaining in the second quarter, they want to force Southern Cal to attempt a field goal. It is now second and eight. This is a big down for this Irish defense. USC stays with the two-receiver set, the pro-set offense. Wellman right, Jackson left. Holton Irvins in the backfield. Marinovich to Irvins. And he's bounced down at the 11 by Smagala. What a nice play by Stan Smagala. Smagala is a guy that people try to pick on every week, but somehow Smagala continues to make plays. Here, Marinovich looks off to his right first and then comes back. And again, Young quarterbacks don't do that very well, but watch the play by number 29. Comes up and not only makes the play, he prevents Urbans from gaining any extra yards after the catch. Smagala had an important chapter in last year's game. Ran a Rodney Peace Pete pass back for a touchdown. Marinovich hit at the 11. Goal. Kowalski. Great play by Bob Dahl, number 93. He got terrific penetration on the option play and got a hold of Marinovich's legs and he had nowhere to go. And so this defense did their job in forcing the field goal attempt. Now what they do, Jim, is put a lot of tall guys inside, guys like Jeff Alm, who's 6'7", to try to block these field goal attempts. The lefty, Quinn Rodriguez. Perfect five for five on the year. He still hasn't missed. That was 29 yards, and it's a 10-point lead for USC. A little anger still left on the field. 10-22 left in the second quarter, and it's a 10-point Trojan lead. USC leads it at Notre Dame Stadium. Jim Nance along with Pat Hayden and John Dockery. Greg Gumbel and Mike Francesa are manning the studio back in New York. USC ranked number nine in the country. They have stopped streaks before at Notre Dame. USC, USC has. Notre Dame riding an 18-game victory streak. And four more would give them a school record. And that has been against some incredibly tough competition over those 18 games. That's 21 victory streak, which is the school mark, was stopped in a tie game by USC. 18-48. Rodney Culver can't find it, but now falls on it at the 23-yard line. It's Ismail actually with the recovery. Culver was the man bobbling it at first. Tomorrow we have a full slate of NFL games, 1 o'clock Eastern. The improved Tampa Bay Bucks travel to Washington. The Cowboys try for their first win in Kansas City. 
There's other action. Minnesota and Herschel take on Detroit and Rodney Pete. Green Bay versus Miami. Some of the games are late in the day. Some of you will get your game later with the Giants and the Chargers at 4 Eastern. Check your local listings for the game in time. Of course, it all gets started at 12.30 Eastern with the NFL today. Rice looking option now dropping back, throwing long for the Rocket. And it was overthrown. Rice threw that football. 60 yards in the air. <laughs> Tony Rice said earlier this year, the only way that I can ordinarily overthrow Rocket is when he's in his stance. <laughs> but he did it there. And they had a chance for a big play because the free safety was up. Mark Carey was up trying to take away the option play and off the option fake. And that left Ismail open on the post pattern. Notre Dame still looking for its first completion. Rice is 0 for 3 in passing. Wishbone on second and 10. Setting up the screen and right off the back of Grunhard. Boy, that was set up nicely, except it was some pressure on the outside by number 55, Seau, that really prevented that play from developing. There's a flag down too, Pat. And it's against Notre Dame. But watch Junior Seau, number 55. This is a screen being set up. And again, Seau gets in his way, gets the hands up, and the timing, a uh, screen is all timing. The timing was disrupted right there by Seau on the rush. Right off the back of number 75, Tim Grunhardt. It's a good shot of Seau. He has become Southern Cal's playmaker on defense. He is their rush end. He says, when the game's over, I want to feel exhausted. And he's off to a good start today. Other scores, we... We're swinging through the ACC for a moment. Now SEC scores, Georgia and Vanderbilt. Bobby Ross has a streak going for Georgia Tech. Third straight win today for the Yellow Jackets. Ineligible receiver on that play. So it's a loss of down and distance. Third and 15. It's the third time Notre Dame has come up in a third and long situation, Jim. This is not their kind of down. Out of the eye. Johnson and Waters behind Rice. Play action fake to Waters. Rice under pressure throws. And Rocket was in the area. Ismail, but he was buried. Talking about Rice by Randy Horde. Well, Ismail was wide open if Rice had time. Why isn't Ismail number 25 who beats Garner who slips? He runs to the corner route, and he's open by a good five yards, but it was pressure by Randy Horde, which prevented the completion. It just shows you a pass rush equals good defense. A year ago, it was the rush of Notre Dame on Rodney Pete. And today, the Trojans with the rush on Tony Wright, still looking for his first completion. Hendricks punt bouncing around, and Wallace will let it go. Down to the 27-yard line. USC has the football and a 10-point lead. Well, that often seen stone mosaic is on the Father Theodore M. Hesburgh Library building. And it neighbors Notre Dame Stadium. Seventeen seven Southern Cal. And the hot shot freshman, Todd Marinovich, comes to the line with a lead and confidence. He wanted to get started early with success. He has. Three receiver set. Marinovich looking right, throwing right. Jackson dodges one man, another cutting back the middle. Jackson to the 36-yard line. John Jackson, who's only 5'11", 180 pounds, says, I feel like I'm 6'2", 195 pounds when I run routes over the middle. Now, they're going into a no-huddle offense, even though there's 9.27 remaining. This was something they're trying to prevent, defensive substitutions. A second and short, three receivers again. Joel Scott, the extra receiver. Marinovich calling the signals and the play at the line. Hands to Irvins. His little stutter step helps him pick up the first down at the 39. 
Herman. He looked for a moment, couldn't find anything, Pat. Yeah, you're right. He's really a patient runner. Waits for things to develop. And again, the no-huddle offense, everybody's imitating the Cincinnati Bengals of a year ago. And that's because college football, just like pro football, has become a game of substitution. Now they've got a lefty quarterback like the Bengals. Instead of the boomer, it's Todd Marinovich. First and ten. Dumps it off to Irvins. The safety valve on this play. And the football was at the 45-yard line. Don Grimm with the tackle. USC leading at 17-7. No huddle offense continues for the Trojans. 8.38 left in the second quarter. Brinovich is doing a great job of looking people off. Here comes Kowalkowski. Pass almost oh. intercepted by Andre Jones. And Kowalkowski flattened Marinovich. Yeah. We're in South Bend, Indiana. For number one against number nine, the Fighting Irish, riding an 18-game victory streak against Southern Cal. Their longtime rivals. Southern Cal recovered a fumble on the opening kick. Took it in on a touchdown pass to Wallace. Back came Notre Dame. Tony Rice keeps from seven yards. And then Marinovich, another touchdown pass. This to John Jackson. A Rodriguez field goal for USC now has it at 17-7. Third down, we'll call it four. Irvins has the first down. Back in the Notre Dame territory go the USC Trojans. Second touchdown of the game was Marinovich to John Jackson. And what Jackson does a great job of is after he catches the ball, he gets right upfield. Doesn't waste any time, splits two defenders, Light and Terrell, and then crosses the end zone. Didn't dance around, didn't cut back, didn't lose any yardage. And Todd Brinovich has been the story of this game thus far for the Southern Cal. He is not playing over his head, but he is certainly playing beyond his years. I think that last play call surprised Notre Dame. They ran it with Urbans, and he had all kinds of room to pick up the first down. They ran the little bit of a sprint draw play on third and four against some nickel defense. Two tight ends, Galbraith and Griffin. Holt, the fullback, is the lone back on first and ten. to the 35-yard line, 13 yards, tackled by Francisco. This is a nice block by Brad Leggett, number 63, the center. Zorich is out, and Ridgely, number 99, is in. But Leggett does a nice job of opening up the hole there for Leroy Holt. And you know, Jim, I think we have two of college football's best fullbacks in this game, and Leroy Holt from Southern Cal and Anthony Johnson from Notre Dame. Two guys who are very versatile, could beat you catching the ball, running, and blocking. And they may be the best blocking fullbacks you'll see. Absolutely, yeah. The, the people at Notre Dame felt that Holt was the best blocker they saw all year last year. First and ten. Halfway through the second quarter. USC leading by ten, looking for more. It's intercepted. Dewan Francisco. USC driving again, and this time Marinovich throws his second interception of the day. I think Marinovich was expecting Larry Wallace, number 82, to break inside over the middle, and he decided to go over behind the defensive back. I thought he was expecting him to cut right underneath and catch that ball low and away. But this time, Todd Marinovich did not look the receiver off. And again, D1 Francisco, number 32, did a great job of reading those eyes and then stepped up to make the play. Brinovich has not thrown many interceptions, but the secondary, that experienced secondary, have picked off two thus far. Two interceptions, two touchdown passes. Notre Dame from its 18. Rice gets a block from Waters and goes out of bounds at the 21-yard line. 
We got a report on the sidelines from John Dockery. Take it away, Doc. Thank you, Jim. Pat Hayden mentioned it earlier. Craig Furtick, you were on a team that beat a number one Notre Dame team. What did you tell your nephew, Todd Marinovich, before the game? Oh, I hugged him and uh, I told him what my old coach, John McKay, told me. This is what it's all about. And as I told Pat Hayden many years ago, just drop back and hit the open man. What would you say about his performance to this moment? Up until that last throw, pretty good. Okay, thank you very much. Now back to you guys. Well, he's engineered and upset to this point. Second down, seven, Rice to the 24-yard line, setting up third and about four. They have to get to the 28. And this is a very important third down for the Notre Dame offense. 7.20 remaining in the second quarter. They have all three of their timeouts. It's important, I believe, that they get something on the scoreboard before halftime. And this is a team that has done a great job of driving the distance right before halftime to usually knock people out, but not today. The one Irish score set up by a 57-yard kickoff return by Rajiv Ismail. Third down, Rice has his first completion. Derek Brown near the first down. 27-yard line. He might be a shade short. Delmar Chesley put the shoulder into him. They have stopped him from getting the first. Derek, Derek Brown, only a sophomore, but he will be the difference in a lot of Notre Dame games over the next two and a half years. He is 6'7", 250 pounds, a dominating blocker, but he has the speed to get deep. He was recruited by everybody in America two years ago, and he is quietly becoming one of the best tight ends in all of America. As a freshman, he saved his best performances for the big games, didn't he, Pat? Well, he sure did. He played very well against Miami here in that big 31-30 win. Played very well in the Fiesta Bowl. And now he picks up the first down on a very important drive for Notre Dame. The measurement is true. Well, I don't, I don't think you measure Tony Rice, though, by his passing stats, Jim. I, I think you measure him by some of the subtle things that he does to help you win ball games. Running the option, making the right audibles. And the wishbone on first and ten. Anthony Johnson past the 30. A gain of two. Well, you're talking about how you measure Tony Rice. Really, you can't look at his stats. His passing stats aren't going to knock you over. But you look at his winning stats. You really measure him by victories. In the Heisman Watch 89, this is the most unusual year in recent memory. No clear-cut favorite at this point as we near the end of October. You got Major Harris, Andre Ware posting phenomenal numbers at Houston. D. Dallas, I think he had the win last week against Notre Dame, personally. And the reverse fake and pass. And the pass is over the head of Tony Smith. Dwayne Garner stayed with Smith. It looked like Smith slowed down a little bit, Jim. Otherwise, that is an easy score. And again, just the effect of Ismail on this field. You, you, everybody sees him coming around. Everybody's yelling reverse. Watch all the white jerseys just freeze for a moment. They're yelling reverse, reverse. They stop. See the guys, all the guys that went to the reverse? And then Tony Smith really was open. It looked like he slowed down just a pinch. Again, an isolated look right there in the middle of your screen. He's running the post pattern. The free safety steps up. And twice they've tested Garner deep. So it's third and eight. A flag is down. A flag down. Rice pass. Dropped. Ismail handed at the 47 of USC. And right in the chest. But there is a flag down. The story of this game thus far, Jim, has been the passing of Todd Marinovich and Southern Cal's defense putting Notre Dame in third and long situations. Thus far this year, Notre Dame has been a third and two, third and three team. Today, they've been in third and seven, third and eight, most of the afternoon. A couple of other Heisman Trophy uh, hopefuls, Anthony Thompson, who had a terrific year at Indiana, leading Division oh, 1A in rushing, and Ken Clark out of Nebraska. We're going to see him later on in the year. We'll discuss these Heisman hopefuls uh, the rest of the afternoon. Fourth down. A mishap on the snap back, but Hendrick still gets it away, and it's a good one. Bobbled around and lost, but fallen on and recovered by USC. It was Larry Wallace. The ball was at the 14-yard line. Five and a half minutes left in the half. 
Notre Dame and Southern Cal started playing in 1926. USC has handed Notre Dame more losses than any other school, and it's vice versa. Same thing, Irish have given the Trojans more setbacks than anyone else. First and 10, Marinovich to Irvins. Short gain to the 19. Call it four or five yards on the play. Smagala and Grimm. Well, the story here, turnovers in the first quarter helped give USC the early lead. In fact, the turnover on the opening kick, and then Marinovich on a touchdown pass. It's quickly 7-0 USC. A big kick return set up Notre Dame's only score, a Tony Rice dash from seven yards. But Marinovich firing again for a touchdown. It's 17-7 now after a field goal by Rodriguez. Irvins carries to the 21. Will be that third and four situation coming up for the Trojans, Pat. Yeah, in the last third and four situation, they ran the draw play. They spread everybody out, made it look like a pass, and Ricky Irvin's picked up the first down very easily against that nickel defense. But again, for Notre Dame's defense, trailing by 10, a critical down to force the punt, get the ball in good field position, and give Tony Rice a chance to get something on the scoreboard before halftime. Stay with a two-receiver formation. Wellman to the right, Jackson to the left. Looking for Wellman. Catch is made near the first down. This depends on the spot. Makes the catch at the 24-yard line. And they'll measure. Well, he was not open by much, was Gary Wellman against Todd Light. Nice coverage. And anytime you know, Jim, that a corner takes away a short out like that, you're setting up the out and up. At some point in this game, you might very well see Gary Wellman fake that out cut and then break it up for a big play. Got the first down. We are taking a look at Larry Smith a moment ago. He has won here before at Notre Dame Stadium when he was the coach of the Arizona Wildcats. It was 1982. Arizona came into play a 4-0 Notre Dame team. Jerry Faust's best start as the Irish coach, as it would end up. But Arizona won it on a last-second field goal by Zendeja, 16-13. First and 10, Irvins, a loss of three. Graham and Jones. Well, he'll uh, talk about picking up yards. <laughs> yeah, he may lead the team in rushing, Lou Holtz, as he paces. I bet you he goes three or 400 yards a game. There it is. Uh, he's already <laughs> surpassed that. <laughs> that is today, 500 yards rushing by Holtz, and the team has 68. That's impressive. That leads the nation. <laughs> He'll be a thousand. He, maybe he's a Heisman candidate. What'll be interesting to see is if he can keep it up. If he's a fatigue factor in the second <laughs> well, half. In the fourth quarter. You know, he, he probably didn't realize he's even walking up down. He is so into the game, he's got tremendous concentration, find it, thinking about the next sequence of plays that he's going to call. Second down, 13. Oh, a hit put on by Todd Light. Frank Griffin, the backup tight end, made the catch, held on to it at the 27-yard line. This has so far been a game of eyes. Todd Marinovich's eyes against the defensive backs from Notre Dame. And Todd Light uses his eyes to read this pattern and puts the hit on Griffin right after the catch. But what Griffin did a nice job of getting up right away, even if he's hurt, he got right up and bounced back up into the huddle. Well, I tell you, for some, that would have turned out the lights. <laughs> But Griffin got up, walked off the field. Third down, six. Marinovich has Jackson, first down, and out of bounds at the 44-yard line. What nice scheme here so far by Ray Doerr and John Masco, the two guys in charge of USC's offense. They've been sending John Jackson in motion against the man-for-man -man defense, and what that does is force D1 Francisco, number 32, always to be trailing the receiver for an easy throw. And it's been the eyes of Marinovich. We talked about this being a game of eyes. The defensive backs against his eyes. And that time, Marinovich won that battle. A gain of 15. Marinovich has already thrown 25 passes, 16 for 25, 155 yards. On first and 10, Holt, a gain of two. Right into the heart of that defense with Zorich. Holkar coming up. 
At halftime, you'll be seeing more scores plus some highlights from today's action. A big day in college football. Some big wins, huh? Really? Texas again upsetting Arkansas. Yeah. 154 remaining in the first half. USC with three timeouts. They're trying to squeeze as much out of the clock and still get something on the board before halftime. Second down and eight. Running the option. Marinovich pitch to Irvins. Todd Light was the man to stop it at the 48-yard line. USC has held the football on this possession for over four minutes. Next week, Alabama and Penn State. Crimson Tide taking control at this point of the SEC with its victory today over sixth-ranked Tennessee. 47-30, Alabama the winner today. And the Tide is unbeaten. John Jackson hobbling off the field. After that last play, he threw a block and got up slowly. Irvin's met at midfield. Bolkar hit him and hammered him near midfield. We're in the last minute of the first half. Notre Dame signaled for a timeout. Notre Dame takes a timeout with 49 seconds left before the intermission. And the lead by USC. Final minute of the first half. One that has been led by USC. And you see the timeout situation. Notre Dame has two remaining. Notre Dame is not a punt block team. Notre Dame is a return team. And you see that once everyone got to the line, the Trojans called for a time. That's the first timeout taken in this half. Welcome back, folks. Let me just update you on uh, John Jackson, who just went off the field for uh, USC. He hurt his ankle in the Cal game last week. He appears to be fine. There's nobody working on him. He's walking up and down the sidelines. So Jim and Pat, we expect him back. He had missed some practice earlier in the week, uh, John Jackson. That's good news for USC. Good timeout by Larry Smith. Clever timeout by Larry Smith. He wanted to see if Notre Dame was going to try to blunt the, block the punt and who was deep. He's changed punters during this timeout. He had Dale out before. Now it's Preston. Mark Preston, short kick bouncing around into that wind, and it's inside of the 20. There are a few players that were not really aware of where the football was. That could have been a dangerous situation. That was, that's what happens when you punt the ball into a blustering wind, and it really was there. The wind is going 10, 15 miles an hour. But now with 37 seconds remaining, I think what you're going to see is Tony Rice try to run this clock out, go win 17-7 deficit, and try to find a way to make the adjustments to come out and win in the second half. Lou Holtz is one of the great adjustment coaches in college football. From the 19, the delay, Waters, only a gain of a couple. Well, surprisingly, Southern Cal's got single coverage on Ismail. That's one man you must have double cover, John, in this situation. Rice stays on his feet. There's this mile at the 40 and out of bounds at the 42-yard line. Cleveland Coulter pushed him out, but you called it, Pat. He was open. Well, the play earlier was actually single covered. This time, though, Michael Williams, number 54, the linebacker, jams him at the line of scrimmage. But he is a physical player, even though he is only 175 pounds. Runs away from the inside linebacker, Scott Ross, and before Coulter comes up and makes the stop. Gain of 22. Only 12 seconds left in the half. Last time Notre Dame trailed at the half was when Tony Rice really made his debut as the Notre Dame quarterback. It was at Pitt, the Notre Dame trailed 27-0 at halftime. Rice now, flushed out of the pocket, still on his feet, throwing, complete the Brown at the 43, three seconds. Will they get that timeout? Yes. Gain of 15. To complete that thought, in that game against Pitt in 1987, Terry Andrzak was the quarterback for Notre Dame, went out with injury. Rice moved the football in the second half. It was a 30-22 final that day for Pitt, beating Notre Dame, but Rice has been the quarterback since. 
Again, what he has, he has, Tony Rice has some very strong legs. Now, some pretty good pass rush here from the backside, but he fights through a couple of guys. And you have an imposing target in Derrick Brown. He is well covered by Mark Carrier. But what Brown did a great job of is screening Carrier away from him. Remember, Brown is 6'7", 250 pounds. And football was almost pinned for a moment, Pat, to the turf. Almost. Someone got him by the ankle. Mm, that's close. They're going to try a field goal. Notre Dame will attempt a 60-yard field goal. It's Hendrick, the freshman. With the win, his long of the year is 32 yards. Again, he's a freshman. A timeout called by Southern Cal. His longest ever, a 55-yarder in high school, but we're talking a different deal here. Yeah, but when you think of the wind, he's got a good, oh, probably a 15-mile-an-hour wind behind him. You know, Jim, I think another good timeout call there by Larry Smith just to make sure that his team has got everything covered, whether it's going to be a fake and whether they're going to get their big, tall guys inside to try to block this, because anytime you have a 60-yard field goal, it's going to come out of their low. I've got a backup snapper in there, Joe Allen. Jim Sexton, a backup punter, holds for Hendrick. 60-yard kick. Will it get there? No, it's well short. Well short, and the half ends with USC leading over the nation's number one ranked Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Again, the last time Notre Dame trailed at halftime was 1987 against Pittsburgh. Last year in their national championship season, the Irish never trailed at the intermission. Yes, Miami was tied with them at halftime, but Notre Dame beat them here in a classic 31-30. To start the second half, USC will receive the football, and the Trojans will have the added benefit of having the win at their backs in the final quarter. And that makes this a very important quarter for the Notre Dame team. And again, it starts with their defense. You've got to stuff, stuff Southern Cal's offense, force a punt into the wind right now, and get yourself good field position. Alvin Holmes is standing at the two. He's the man in the middle to receive the kick from Hendrick. Instead, it comes on a wing to Wallace. Wallace will follow the wall and then get hit at the 20. There is a flag down on the field on the return. Wallace hit by Greg Davis. Larry Wallace scored the game's opening touchdown. And he returns it to the 20, but the Trojans will be backed up. John Dockery spoke minutes ago to Lou Holtz. Are you there? Okay. Coach, an unfamiliar position. You're down at the half by 10. What adjustments do you make? Well, I think, number one, we've got to stop the third down pass, and we've got to be able to throw the ball better on early down. The third down pass, I think it's really hurt. If they're an awful good football team, there's no doubt about that. What I'm disappointed in, we aren't playing our best, but we're going to have a little gut check. We'll find out where we are now. It's time we all reached down and checked our low hole card. Okay, Coach. Thank you. The gut check begins as USC has the football at its own 10. And Leroy Holt manages only a yard. Ned Bolkar nailed him. Larry Smith knows that this is a very important series for his offensive team because your whole half is set up by your first series on offense. They're backed up into their end zone now on the on the 12-yard line. It's important that they get a first down before they punt. Larry Smith's third season at Southern Cal. He has not beaten Notre Dame his first two years for the Trojans. Second and nine, Irvins. Hit by Grimm at the 13-yard line. There are two games that are circled on USC's calendar. And they are UCLA and Notre Dame. Watch the offensive lineman, Brett Parkinson, number 71. The guard pulling out, but his number 90, all who took up three blockers, took up three white jerseys, and that allowed Grimm and Bolkar and Smagala all in there to make the play. Third and six. Crowd on its feet. Marinovich with time fires.
pass complete to Galbraith, and he is backed up at the 20, and maybe short of the first down. And Larry Smith does not like the mark of the ball. He wants the forward progress. Yep. Did not like the mark. It looked when Galbraith first caught the ball, he was past the marker and then was pushed back. Again, a split crew here today. But watch uh, the patience of Marinovich. Remarkable calm for a freshman playing in a game like this. Finds his third receiver. He's past the first down there. That should have been a first down. They pushed him back, but his momentum was stopped after the first down. He made the catch at the 22 and then was backed up to the 20-yard line, which is inches shy of the first. Good reason to be angry on the USC sidelines. Preston will punt on fourth down. High kick, the win has it, however. Keeps it up at midfield, and Bellis makes the fair catch. Good field position to start out the second half for the Notre Dame offense that has managed only a touchdown. The Irish trail by 10. This is the reason that Larry Smith was upset because the first down marker is itches past the 20 yard line. The ball is thrown there. Now, he catches the ball at about the 22 and is stopped right there. And that's where his full momentum was stopped. The 20 yard line inches past that. You'll see the red marker in just a moment right there. That was where the first down marker is. So that should have been a first down. Instead, Larry Smith and the Trojans had the punt into the wind. A 30-yard boot sets up Notre Dame at midfield. Eilers to the right, Ismail and a slot right. Waters the tail back out of the eye. Option right, Rice keeps. Longest run of the game for Notre Dame and a first down. A gain of 11. That's the longest rushing play of the afternoon for Notre Dame. And a terrific block by Pat Eilers, the wide receiver, number 13, who came down from the outside, sealed off the inside, and Tony Rice just cut off his block. Bottom of the screen, number 13. He comes down. The other receiver comes down. They both make blocks, and Rice cuts right behind it. First and 10 from the USC 40. Running the same way, this time pitch to Waters, nothing. Carrier came up from free safety. Scott Ross was there. Let's get a report from John Dockery. John? Jim, it was in this tunnel before the game that the two teams fought. At halftime, a different kind of exchange. Notre Dame walked in. They were very quiet, didn't say a word. USC right next to them was baiting Notre Dame by singing the Irish fight song. I don't know if that's a wise idea. The Irish didn't respond then, but now they're out on the field. Jim, Pat, back to you. Second and ten. Rice rolling, throwing. Eilers has it at the 30. And this will depend on the spot. It will be a little bit short of the first down. That was a frozen rope. Pat Eilers, the man who made the block just a moment ago at the top of the screen, is going to run the hook route. Pat Eilers is a role player on this team. He'll block for you when you need to. He'll run the routes. He'll catch the ball over the middle. And that's one of the great things, I think, Jim, about this Notre Dame team. They have a lot of guys playing different roles and happy to do it. Pat Eilers went to Yale and transferred here to Notre Dame, where he walked on the football team. Third and one. Wishbone set. Rice is tripped up from behind by Scott Ross. And it's a loss by Ross. And we'll have to check Notre Dame. It's at the 33-yard line. Knock the back for a two-yard loss. Every good defense has an emotional leader, and Scott Ross is that for Southern Cal. He read the guard block down. He read the guard. He blocked down. He stepped into the hole, had just enough speed to get his hand around the feet of Tony Rice and tripped him up. It is fourth and three. Notre Dame will go for it. They've run option plays for years in this situation with great success. Two tight ends. Rod West joins Derek Brown. Rice keeps, has it, and more. Inside of the 10. The 
inside linebacker for Southern Cal, number 55, Junior Sal, comes down so hard at the right part of your screen, Tony Rice just steps around it. Carrier, number seven, who has a responsibility on Rice, gets blocked. And that's the same play, Jim, that he ran for 65 yards against Southern Cal for a touchdown last year. Gain of 23, first and goal. And Anthony Johnson runs for three. Into that line, that wall of USC. And Notre Dame is so good when they get inside the 10-yard line because they have a lot of different ways of getting the ball to the end zone. They run option plays, which gives you a big fullback in Johnson. They can get Rice to the outside, and they've got big receivers in Derek Brown and Pat Eilers to catch the ball. Four or five different options when they get inside the 10. And you'll often see the wishbone from here, but they stick with the eye. Eilers to the right. Waters is the tailback. Anthony Johnson taking the handoff inside and getting near the one. He may be one of the best inside runners I have ever seen, Anthony Johnson. He has done this for four years at Notre Dame. His legs never stop moving. Even when he gets hit, he never gets hit solidly. His legs keep moving, and he's a big guy. He's six feet one inches, and he's going to fall forward and pick up a couple of extra yards. Always going forward. And this is where you see him even more often. Third and goal from the two. Rice has it. Pitch to Waters. Touchdown, Notre Dame. within three. Low snap. Sexton gets it down. Hendrick drives it through. It was gut check time, said Lou Holtz, and right out come the Irish with a touchdown on their first possession of the second half. It was a beautiful sequencing of plays, too, as you watch Tony Rice here as he comes down and flips the ball to Ricky Waters. He picks up a nice block by Derek Brown, the tight end. But it was the fourth down play, the fourth and three play that Tony, uh, Tony Rice had set it all up. Again, an option play. This time, he chose to keep it himself. Tony Rice, the leader of this offense. Jim Nance along with Pat Hayden and John Dockery on a gray autumn day at Notre Dame Stadium. Is there a better scene for college football than to be at Notre Dame Stadium in October? The change of colors, the two giants, USC and Notre Dame, the two bands with the two glorious fight songs. And we've got a good one brewing. It's 17-14, USC leading over number one, Notre Dame. As Lou Holtz told John Dockery at the beginning of the second half, it's gut check time for the Fighting Irish, and they came out and scored to close it to a three-point game. Hendricks kick will go through the end zone, touchback, and USC will bring it out to the 20. A beautiful job of reading the option by Tony Rice, but watch number 55, Junior Sale. He is crashing down on Rice and trying to make him make a quick decision. And it's a great read by Rice. Takes the ball out of the fullback stomach, steps back two steps to give himself some clearance, and then has the, the speed and the quickness to pitch the ball to Ricky Waters. Junior Sale trying to put quick heat on Tony Rice. From the 20. Marinovich will throw on first down. Complete. Joel Scott. And just a short game. Five yards at all. Shut up! This is a game of emotion. Oh. And challenges. And a special contest and a special challenge given to this team by Lou Holtz at halftime. Defending national champions and believe me, all those seniors, Jim, know. Great athletes play well in big games. 
They've called it all week. Big versus big. And not to diminish the caliber of other opponents, but they each expressed in their own way how they were looking forward to playing against the other big guys. Second and five. Renovich complete the Griffin and a first down for Southern Cal at the 32 yard line pushed out by Dewan Francisco a well, nice little scheme there by Southern Cal. Ray Dorr and John Masco, the two guys who control USC's offense, have done a great job of mixing up plays. And college football and line long drives mean you have to sequence your plays. They've run the ball at well at times. They've dinked the ball downfield. They've thrown it upfield. They've done a nice job of, of setting up plays. Todd Marinovich has gone to the air 28 times. First and ten. Two tight ends set. They'll run it with Holt. And he'll pick up three. Tackled at the 35-yard line by Grimm. Zorich. Colorado continues on. Next up for the Buffs, Oklahoma. Now mentioning Colorado, we were talking about the Heisman a little bit earlier. There's a guy that no one's talked much about at Colorado, Darian Hagan, their quarterback, who's had a sensational year, both running and passing, filling in for their departed leader, Sal Inese, who died several weeks ago. An emotional Colorado team. Second and seven. Jackson in motion. Orinovich throws to Jackson. And he has another first down for the Trojans at the 47-yard line. Bumped out by Andre Jones, a gain of 12. Again, this is the third time that John Jackson has gone in motion, run the same route. And what's going to have to happen, Notre Dame's going to have to make an adjustment and roll the corner up on top because he is just too wide open. It's only a five-yard throw, but they gain probably 12, 14 yards, 12 yards out of an easy throw. You're going to have to take that route away by rolling the corners up. First and ten. Holt for three. Devon McDonald in on the tackle along with Spagala. Let's go down to the sidelines to the docks with John Dockery. Jim and Pat, remember yesterday when we talked to the USC coaches and Todd Marinovich, they kept emphasizing, take what the defense gives you, the short pass, the quick out. Well, all along the sidelines, they've been continuing to emphasize that. So that's why we're seeing the short game, because Notre Dame is giving that to USC. Vince Doc, you are right in the patience of Marinovich. Only 185 yards in the completions, but he's taking what they're giving him. He hands off on this play to Holt. And Holt is at the 47. He needs to get inside of the 44 of Notre Dame for the first down. Talking about taking what's given him. Marinovich has completed his last eight passes. Yes, they've been high percentage passes. But again, as a young guy, Jim, he doesn't force the ball, though he's thrown the two interceptions today, but coming in today's game, only the three interceptions. But he's had trouble when he's thrown the ball downfield deep. That's where the interceptions have come. Here's a big third down play for you. Third and four. A fake to Irvin. Marinovich throws and is batted down by all. Jeff Alm is noted for that. Jeff, Jeff Alm tips as many balls as anybody in college football. Last year, he led this team in interceptions because he tipped so many balls. Number 90. And what they do, he doesn't get a big pass rush here, but he gets his big left hand in the way. He is six foot seven inches. And that is a big play because the receiver was open. And you know, you never know on these tip balls how many big plays you save, but I guarantee you that was one right there that Jeff Elm saved on the tip. It was going in the direction of John Jackson. And on fourth down, Preston punts for the Trojans. Good kick inside of the 20. Waters calls the fair catch. Ricky Waters at the 14-yard line. Well, we were talking about big on big and how some of the players had discussed that this week. Well, Jeff Alm, who just batted down that pass, was one man who had that explanation. 
I love going against somebody who's 6'7", 290, 300 pounds. And last year went against uh, the one-man gang. Uh, you know, he, he was 320 or upwards of thereabout. And uh, it's, it, it's just fun to see who can hit who the hardest and, you know, to, to take somebody one-on-one -on -one and try and stuff them or maybe occasionally have them stuff you. It's it just, this is what football is all about. Ricky Waters on the carry on first down, and he picks up a Notre Dame first down at the 25, getting the lead block from Anthony Johnson, a gain of 11. College football is about adjustments, and Lou Holtz has always made great adjustments at halftime. Right now, they have come back out in this second half and run some option in their first drive. That time, it was a power play, a pitch play, and again, it was Anthony Johnson, the fullback, who threw the key block for Waters. I can't tell you how well Anthony Johnson is playing. Take a look at the fullback, number 22, Everybody will look at the at the run that Ricky Waters. Take a look at the measurement here first. He's got it. First down, Notre Dame. Everybody will talk about the run that Ricky Waters made here, but it's the fullback number 22, the block on Williams number 54, that really sets it up. This is a beautiful teamwork in this second half, an opening drive. They've mixed the ball up, uh, their plays up beautifully, running some option plays, and then there's some power. Must be gratifying today for Waters to score that touchdown. He missed last year's game because he showed up late for a team meeting and was sent home for Los Angeles. Rice's pass to Derek Brown. Brown was open. And Rick, uh, Tony Rice took another big hit. Derek Brown was open by 10 yards. Everybody was fooled on a great play action fake. And earlier they threw the ball to the wide receiver. This time number 86 runs right past number seven, Mark Carrier. Mark Carrier realized he was beaten, but the ball was just thrown way too inside. But that's an easy big play if he doesn't overthrow it. Boy, I tell you, that's one tomorrow. I guarantee you he's going to wish that he had back. You talked about Derek Brown in the first half. He is one big guy, one tight end who can take it long. Yeah. Good speed, big size. Second 10, pass to Eilers is short. Incomplete. You, know, you look at, at Tony Rice, and you see him miss a couple of passes like that, and you wonder why. Well, he takes such a pounding, Jim, running the option. And I think it's very difficult for an option quarterback to have finesse as a thrower because you get beaten up so badly. You're always taking shots to the hips and to the shoulders, to the arms, to the neck. And it's real tough to get into a rhythm throwing the ball. Now his teammates love him for that, though, the punishment that he's able to endure. He doesn't even put on one of those yellow meshes in practice. He takes the hits, the punishment, during the week as well. Third and ten, pump fake, now throwing, and it's intercepted by Carrier, Mark Carrier, and a clip on the return. Flag thrown on Dan Owens, but Mark Carrier has returned the football for USC. Now what a difference a play makes. A moment ago, Mark Carrier was beaten by the tight end Derek Brown. And that time he makes the play, makes the interception. Yeah, they do call the clip against Southern Cal. But again, it was the pass rush that really set this interception up. Tim Ryan, number 99, is there. Junior Sale, number 55, is there. Put an awful lot of duress as he tries to get the ball to Brown. And then number 90, right there, hits the back. It's the, it's the back, clearly a clip. The boy knock, marks him all the way down to the 41-yard line. That's one of the uh, tight penalties. The ball would have been somewhere around the 30 yep. of Notre Dame, but now back to the 41. Clip left to the screen here. Again, number 90 is going to block his man, the, the blue jersey, right from the back. An easy call by the official. USC takes over, and it's 41. Marinovich off the fingertips of Holt. Second and ten. Marinovich. He is hit by Zurich. The pass falls incomplete at the feet of Galbraith. Well, again, a terrific play by Zorich. I'll tell you, he's got one of those, you know, metabolisms like a hummingbird. He's always kind of moving. He never is stopping. His legs are always moving. He's chasing the quarterback. Even after the ball is thrown downfield, he'll run after the receiver. The guy's an amazing player. Said he grew up in Chicago. 
As a kid, he used to lift weights with two manhole covers <laughs> welded to a bar, to a metal bar, to two manhole covers, and use that as his weights. It's kind of how you throw nickels around him. Yeah, right. <laughs> Shotgun on third down. Jackson's open. He stepped out at the 39-yard line, a gain of 19. With the safety, Pat Terrell, number 15, slipped on the turf. It was raining all week long here. But Jackson, who had run a bunch of inside routes, we talked about setting things up. Remember how many passes Jackson caught inside? He scored inside. This time he runs outside. At the top of the screen right there, Pat Terrell, number 50, slips. And he's supposed to make that play, and really his momentum carried him out of bounds. Otherwise, he goes maybe another 10 or 15 yards. It's a first down inside of the 40. Nonetheless, two tight ends, Galbraith and Griffin. Carry by Holt, and a gain of four. You know, watching John Jackson perform so well today, Jim, you know, you all seem to get cynic, so cynical about college football when you read what happens in places like, you know, Florida and Oklahoma this year. But it's nice to see a guy like John Jackson who's done so well in both baseball at Southern Cal and football. He's an academic All-American studying for his MBA. It kind of renews your faith that somewhere along, along the line, some of these guys are becoming uh, good byproducts of the, of the system. He grew up in a college environment. His father was an assistant football coach at Illinois and then moved the family to California where he was the USC running back coach in 76 to 1981. Flags down. Pat Harlow may have moved on the left side. John Jackson's father was an assistant coach at USC. Under John Robinson, yep. At the conclusion of today's CBS Sports college football broadcast, we will select a Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team. Chevrolet donates a $1,000 scholarship to the general scholarship fund of each school. We're talking about his diversity, John Jackson. He also was a hockey player growing up in Illinois. That was his favorite sport of all. He's excelled in football and baseball, but he says hockey's his favorite. Second and 12. Marinovich stepping forward, looking for Jackson, incomplete. Pass a little low. Marinovich got a little anxious on that one as he stepped forward because it really wasn't a big rush. He could have hung back in there, but number one in the slot, John Jackson, he likes to work the middle. They'll put him in the slot formation, and then he has the whole center of the field to work. He was wide open, Marinovich, as he was running forward, threw the ball too low. Big down here, again, for this Notre Dame defense to keep Southern Gal from a chance of another score. Third and 12, we'll see the shotgun again for USC. Renovich runs out. And is hit from behind. Hit in the ankles by Zurich. And that tackle may have saved big yardage because Marinovich was moving into field goal range the longer he ran. Well, you're right. Chris Zorch, again, one of those small little plays that goes unnoticed at the end of the game. But Marinovich probably gets his team at least in field goal range if Zorch doesn't make the play. Got a hold of him by an ankle. And since the ball is at the 40, and it's into the win, USC will punt. Mark Preston. Trying to pooch it inside of the 20. And Waters makes the fair catch at the 15. 25-yard punt. Does back up the Irish inside of the 20. Final three and a half minutes of the third quarter. From South Bend, Indiana, Jim Nance, and Pat Hayden, John Dockery, number one Notre Dame down a field goal to Southern Cal. How did this storied rivalry get started? Well, it actually, oddly enough, began in Lincoln, Nebraska. Thanksgiving Day, 1925, Notre Dame played Nebraska in Lincoln. The Cornhuskers won that game, and the Irish were unhappy with the curt treatment they felt their fans received. Two weeks after that game, Notre Dame severed the series with Nebraska and added Southern Cal. And on first and 10 from their own 15, the Irish throw incomplete. Trying to get the ball in the hands of the Rocket. 
And Junior Sal again hit Tony Rice and then picked him up, gave him a pat on his back. But again, every time Tony Rice throws the ball, he is getting hit. And every time he runs the option, he is getting hit. We said at the top of the show, this was going to be a game of big plays and a close game separated by a several big plays. It's still going to be a fourth quarter game. Second down and 10. Looking in on number 12, Ricky Waters. For the Notre Dame second touchdown. Fumble. Rice fumbled the football. Scramble for it. USC has it. Now they're going to rule that Tony Rice was down. Is there a change? No, I don't believe. I think no, it's USC football. I saw one indication, one official pointing to the turf, but they're ruling, they're pointing where the ball is taken over now by the Trojans. Let's have a look at it. This is the play that Rice ran earlier. It's a little option play, but he's going to cut it inside. The ball came out very early in the run, and then I thought Rice had covered it there, and then there number 54 first who had a shot at it, and then it was Carrier, number seven, who made the final recovery. And yeah, that ball did pop out very quickly. Rice tried to dive on it, and some may have felt that Rice had it momentarily, but the ball was still jumping around. And now USC is set up from the Notre Dame 20. Zurich hits Irvin. Irvin's with a two-yard loss. That's the 12th tackle for Zurich. Chris Zorich is going to hurt you in the backfield. He'll stuff you at the line. He'll fight through double teams. He'll sometimes play pass coverage. But Chris Zorich helps this team win every week, believe me. No question about that. Man, is he having a game. Second down and 11. Morenovich in the pocket, going across the middle. John Jackson, diving catch at the seven. Catch is made at the seven-yard line. Well, a lot of receivers, when they go over the middle, give you the alligator arms. You know, the short arms, they won't lay out because they're going to get, they're afraid they're going to get hit by the free safety. He signals that he's open. He's not afraid to get out there and dive. And again, the, what makes this Southern Cal team so tough is because they run the ball well, the linebackers are in a real bind. You come up and play the run, or do you drop back in coverage? And that leaves a big area there for Jackson to work. First and goal to go for USC. Morenovich pitched to Urbans. Jackson with a block. He tried to stay on the block. Eventually, Smagava fought off of it and forced him out. You're right. Stan Smagala, number 29, did a great job of fighting through the block of John Jackson to make the play. Otherwise, that is a score. That should have been a touchdown, but Smagala did a great job. Alma's at the four-yard line. Here's what you were talking about, Pat. Look at him just fight. That's just all determination because they're both about the same size. And Smagala saved the touchdown there, believe me. We'll call it the three. Up. USC jumps. Mm. Here we like go. Griffin. Yep. And that's a signal that they were going to throw the ball. <laughs> Anytime a receiver knows it, he's going to get the ball thrown to him. He gets a little anxious, particularly when you're tight end. You know, you don't get the ball thrown that much to you. You get those legs moving. Yeah. You start thinking about that oh. touchdown dance. <laughs> exactly. Start thinking about the high moms. Illegal procedure. Offense. Repeat. Second down. And that's a big, big penalty. So now you go instead of second and three, you're at the eight-yard line. And this, I think this is the toughest area of the field to put the ball in the end zone from. Jackson split right. Wellman in a slot right. One tight end, it's Galbraith. Second of goal. Irvins. Hit by Jeff Alm. No game. Boy, did Alm do a nice job of fighting off his block because he was originally blocked but didn't stay blocked. Refused to be blocked. Threw off his man and made the play. Watch number 90. He's the man that tipped the ball earlier in, the, in this half. 
stunner. He is blocked. He fights off it and then makes the play. Otherwise, Irvins has a nice cutback lane. Those takedown kind of a tackles. Stirring up the crowd in the end zone. Not like they needed it. Third and goal. Marinovich with time. Fires. Intercepted. Todd White. was tipped by one of the inside linebackers, and I think it was Don Grimm. And that caused the interception because Marinovich had the receiver open. Watch here. In the middle of your screen, number 36, reads Marinovich very well. Gets the hand up right there, makes the tip, and then Todd Light again comes in and makes the play. That is terrific team defense. That's about the third tip they've had right there. And then Light is stepping in in front of Larry Wallace, and he had him pretty well covered regardless. He really did. From the 20, pitch to Waters. Waters with a block and has a first down. I'll tell you what, Brunhard pushed Coulter right out of there and cleared the way. might have been intercepted anyway by Light because he had excellent position. But here is it. one more look at the interception. It was set up by a pass rush as he gets hit in the chest right there by number 45, McDonald. But good coverage by Todd Light on Wallace. First and 10 for the Irish. Ismail running from the tailback spot. Hmm. Hammered by Ernest Spears. But he picked up six yards. We're in the final minute of the third quarter. USC, ninth ranked in the country, leading 17-14 over Notre Dame. Been a game of turnovers and big plays, and Todd Light has made his share of them, believe me. That's his sixth interception on the year. Carrier had his sixth on the year earlier in this game. Larry Wallace was the intended target. Second down and four. Wishbone time for Notre Dame. Pitch to Waters. And he's near the first down. The 42-yard line. You know, Ricky Waters has been in Lou Holtz's doghouse a little bit for not being a physical runner, but that time he ran over two defenders to pick up the first down. And that was a tough physical run by Waters, and that's what Lou Holtz wants from him. He said, Pat, talking about being in the doghouse, the lowest point of his life was last year, the day that USC played... Notre Dame. He was not there with his Irish teammates. Again, I mentioned it earlier, he had been sent home, showing up late for a team dinner. He watched the game. It was one against two. He watched the game from O'Hare, from the O'Hare Airport, Chicago. Come back now in the 89 version. They scored a touchdown and has just picked up an Irish first down. Ismail gets the corner and into USC territory at the 48-yard line. Bumped out by Dwayne Garner. That's the end of the third quarter. We have seen all kinds of intensity and emotion to this point. We've got 15 minutes to go in South Bend. We'll be back after this message and a word from your local station. That gray October sky, just perfect for football in South Bend, Indiana. You know, we had winter-like weather this week. In fact, Thursday and Friday snowed a total of about eight inches. It was cold. It's starting to clear out now. However, it's still a bit brisk, and there's a chill of excitement here as we enter the fourth quarter, and Notre Dame is driving. The ball is at the USC 48-yard line, second and short. Second and inches. Anthony Johnson leaps forward for the first down for Notre Dame. You see the shot just a moment ago with Tony Rice in the huddle with a smile on his face? Tony Rice is a guy who plays this game with a smile on his face and plays it with great passion. There it is. Again, just the eyes of a competitor. 
He's only lost twice as a starter at Notre Dame. 22 and 2. Good reason to smile. First and 10, and the pitch to Waters. Run down from behind by Junior Seau. Dwayne Garner helped out as well. Junior Seau has also played well, much, much like Zorich has played well for Notre Dame. Seau has played real well for Southern Cal. He has been rushing the passer. He's primarily a pass rusher, but he's done a nice job on the options. Seau out of Oceanside, California. And limping off the field is Dan Owens. He's a guy who's played well for him this year. Seven sacks this year. The USC signaling for a timeout now. They only had 10 men on the field. So they quickly called a timeout as Notre Dame approached the line of scrimmage. Notre Dame faces second and seven. It can get loud here. We've seen this in the third quarter today as the momentum was shifting and Notre Dame took it in for a score. Pat, what was the largest or loudest place you played before? Well, it was right here in 1973. Eric Barsegan's team killed us, but the crowd is right on top of you here. It's very loud. We saw Tim Ryan a moment ago. He says the loudest crowd is at Washington State. Rice keeps and gets near the first. Mark Carrier lowered the helmet, shoulders, hit Rice at the 34. And they have to measure for the first down. Let's get a report from John Dockery. Jim, moments ago you saw Dan Owens, the uh, defensive lineman for uh, USC, leaves the field. Preliminary report, he has a sprained knee. They expect him to come back. We'll keep you updated. Now, this is a game in Owens' last year, Doc. He is a senior, never beaten this Notre Dame team, and wants very much to be a part of that if it happens here today. Now he's replaced by Gene Froger on that defensive line. Colorado winning big again today, as expected today. You see Clemson, North Carolina State. Arizona is doing well out in the Pac-10, I'll tell you that. They're surprised a lot of teams. Speaking of Clemson, Tony Rice grew up in South Carolina. He said, I grew up as a University of North Carolina basketball fan and a Clemson football fan. It's third and inches. Anthony Johnson breaks free. Touchdown, Notre Dame. Johnson and Notre Dame leads for the first time today. Hendrick. Extra point try is good. 21-17 Irish. Jim on a short yardage play, oftentimes the defense sells out. So if you can just get past the initial line of scrimmage, you have a chance for the big play. The right tight end on the right side of the screen, three men down from the center. Number 86, Derek Brown crushes his man inside and opens a gaping hole for Anthony Johnson. But we have seen Anthony Johnson catch the ball, run the ball tough inside block, and here he shows some speed. That touchdown dash has put Notre Dame back on top. 21-17 early in the final quarter. It's now back on the left arm of Todd Marinovich. The hopes for USC. Trailing for the first time today. USC will have the wind at its back here in the final quarter. 13 minutes, 51 seconds left. Hendricks kick. Wind holds it up. Mooney picks it up. And he's down at the 24-yard line. 
Jim, it is so hard to defend a wishbone fullback because he hits the line of scrimmage so quickly. And on a short yardage play, once you get past that initial line of scrimmage, you have a chance for a real big play. And that's what happened there with Anthony Johnson. This man has had a terrific ball game doing all sorts of different things, blocking, catching, and they're running. Terrific career. That's his 30th rushing touchdown. He grew up here as an usher at the Notre Dame football games. He was an usher in that exact end zone. He would sit and dream about being the next Vegas Ferguson, or Alan Pinkett, he says. Pass is complete to Jackson near the 30. You know, it's, it's funny thing about college football. There's probably some little kid up in that end zone right now dreaming about being the next Anthony Johnson. That's right. Well, again, it's been a remarkably uh, composed game by Todd Brinovich, but he's got a lot of work left here in this drive. He hasn't thrown the ball downfield a lot with success, so he's going to have to continue to dink the ball and be patient. That other end zone you were looking at, Anthony Johnson's father has also been an usher here for years. Marinovich, pass caught by Jackson, and he's down at the 42-yard line. Smagala came in on the blitz. You are seeing some great plays today, folks. Stan Smagala, number 29, comes in on a corner blitz and nearly takes Marinovich's head off. But he gets the ball off, and he was well covered. Jackson was well covered by 47 Bolcar, and then Terrell nearly kills Jackson. But it was the pressure. He hung in there. And again, a lot of young quarterbacks will get those happy feet, but not Marinovich today. There's Smagala, who came barreling in there on Marinovich. First and 10. Will keep. I'm not sure he knew where the line of scrimmage was. One time walked, ran down that line and was thinking about pulling it back. But he picks up five. Let's go back down to the sidelines with our man, John Dockery. Jim, you know, sometimes on the sidelines you get a feel for what's happening in a game in a team. And right now, some of the fire, the pregame fire from USC is gone. Some of that arrogance that they showed at halftime going in and taunting Notre Dame is gone. They're not out of this, but a little of the juice is gone from the Trojans. Back to you, Jim. Second and five. And Jackson has, I believe, another first down for USC. They'll regain that momentum if they keep picking away at this Notre Dame defense, as they have here, three consecutive first downs on this possession. And their game plan coming into this the game was to throw the ball the first three quarters, have those defensive linemen have to rush the passer a lot and get tired, and then when the fourth quarter came around, crunch time to run the ball, pound the ball behind a very big offensive line. The eyes of the Notre Dame defense waiting for the USC Trojans. Chris Zorich. Second down. Actually first down and Marinovich runs it. Junior Bryant flips him by the ankles. Yardage stick on the sidelines at second down. That was only a first down play. The ball is at the 42-yard line. Tomorrow, don't forget to watch 12.30 Eastern time. Brent Nerr, Dick Buckus, Will McDonough with the NFL Today. That'll be followed, of course, by our regional NFL coverage. 12.30 Eastern time, NFL Today. They're going to be talking about that... Uh, Bear team, Chicago Bears, a little trouble brewing over there. Yeah, Mike Dick Dicka really unhappy with the loss last week to the Houston Oilers. An update on the earthquake in San Francisco, how it affected the 49ers. Second down, Marinovich. His receiver had fallen. That was Larry Wallace on the ground. And Boy, was he open, too. He was very upset that he slipped as he tried to plant that foot and cut. His feet came right out from underneath him. Michigan winning by two touchdowns today. A victory over Iowa. We are at Notre Dame Stadium, the hallowed grounds of the Fighting Irish, who have the nation's longest winning streak at 18 in a row. The ranked number one. They have a four-point lead over USC. 
And the Trojans face third and five from the 42 of the Irish. Bob Marinovich sacked. The ball was loose. They're going to rule Marinovich was down. Kowalkowski. Scott Kowalkowski comes in on Marinovich. And Troy Ridgely as well. Notre Dame fumbled the opening kick. USC cashed in on a touchdown pass to Wallace. After a Ismail kick return over 50 yards, it set up this touchdown by Rice to tie it in the first quarter. Back came USC after a fumbled punt by the Rocket. Another touchdown pass. And then a Rodriguez field goal. It was 17-7. But now back has come the Irish with two touchdowns to lead it. This punt bounces into the end zone. Mark Preston hoping for a more favorable bounce inside of the 10, but it rolls in there and a touchback. Again, Rodriguez with a 29-yard field goal, second quarter, and it was 17-7 USC at the half. In the third quarter, Notre Dame's first possession of the second half, Ricky Waters scoring on a two-yard option run. And then Notre Dame taking the lead here at the start of the fourth quarter. Anthony Johnson, 35 yards. It's been a game of big plays offensively and defensively, and that was one of the biggest as Todd Light picked off Marinovich here in the second half. The Rocket, Ismail for five yards. That was a big interception back, back there, Pat, because USC led at the point by three. They get it in the end zone, they're up 10. They walk away scoreless after Todd Light's defensive gym. And I tell you, college football is so much of a, a game of adjustments. Barry Alvarez, the defensive coordinator at Notre Dame, has done a great job in the ha since halftime shutting SC out, made all the adjustments to do that. Waters lost his footing but still stays up and gets the first down to the 33-yard line. Boy, is that a big play. What looks like is going to be a negative play, a two- or three-yard loss, and this is all the determination of Ricky Waters. Again, so disappointed that he couldn't play against Southern Cal last year. He wanted to make the most of it this year, and again, in Lou Holtz's doghouse for not being physical. Well, this is his second very physical run today. First and ten. the football and USC caught it in midair I believe yes it's Brian Tulio who recovered the opening kickoff fumble of Ismail his second recovery today these fumbles are because of hard hitting guys aren't carrying the ball loosely this is a matter of good defense and big hits which you expect in this kind of game Anthony Johnson gets hit from behind Number 55, Seau, hits him, the ball pops up, and then the inside linebacker to Leo, number 56, made the recovery. Brian Tulio has recovered the football at the Notre Dame 34-yard line. 10 minutes, 20 seconds left. USC needing a touchdown to take the lead, and they fire Marinovich, Jackson, to the 15, and they drag him down at the 11th. 23-yard game. John Jackson is a senior. He has never defeated Notre Dame. And this game means more to him than just about anybody in this team. Smagala falls down. And again, there's the catch. And then it's the determination, knowing it's his last chance at Southern Cal. And then the emotion of Todd Brunovich, the freshman quarterback from Balboa, California. He is the emotional leader of this team already, even though only a freshman. First and 10 from the 11. Marinovich passes batted down, caught by Marinovich. That counts as a completion, Marinovich to Marinovich, but it's a loss on the play. Back to the 16-yard line. I believe it was all again who got a paw on it. It may have been Devin McDonald, number 45, Jim, but I, I tell you, Notre Dame and Barry Alvarez, the defensive coordinator, deserves some credit. I have done a, seen a lot of Notre Dame games over the years, and they tip more balls than anybody in college football. When they can't get to the quarterback, they put those big paws up and make some plays. This is a game that opened with emotions. Actually began 
before the game even started. A war in the tunnel. And now it's a war on the field. On second down, batted down again. Jeff Hall. Morenovic had enough zip on that. That ball was destined for the end zone. When you have a quarterback getting rid of the ball as quickly as Morinovich is, you can't rush the passer. So what do you do when you get blocked? Three guys blocking Jeff Alm, but he doesn't quit. He doesn't stop. He times it beautifully. It's a beautifully timed jump by Jeff Alm to tip his third pass of the day. 9.07 left. USC trails by four. This is third and 15. They can get the first at the one-yard line. Marinovic has his man. It's Wellman. Touchdown, USC back in front. Jim, how many times have we said that offensive football is a matter of setting plays up? Remember how many times John Jackson came in motion and caught the little pass out there in the flat? Well, he did it this time, but then they ran the post behind him, and Wellman came wide open. This is an important extra point to take it from two to three. And Rodriguez hits it. 21 points today off turnovers for USC, and the Trojans lead it 24-21. John Jackson in motion. Remember again, earlier in the game, he caught three balls out there in the flat. The top of the screen is Roman. He runs the post, but three jerseys go after Jackson, including the free safety, who should stay back there. But Wellman runs right in behind him in a beautifully thrown ball by Marinovich. Nine minutes, one second left. And the freshman quarterback steers his team back downfield and back in front. <laughs> You know, as a former defensive back for the Jets and in college, I know the feeling Pat Terrell had. When he did that time, he bit on Jackson in motion, number one there. Instead of staying in the middle and watching for Wellman coming across, he went towards the flat. Wellman was open behind him in the end zone. It was Pat Terrell's responsibility. He missed it. USC scores. And, Doc, you're absolutely right, but it was set up because they threw that route to John Jackson three times and then came there in the post pattern behind him. So they set it up beautifully. Todd Marinovich sets a school record on that drive, 28 completions in a game. And John Jackson breaks his own school mark, 12 catches in a game. USC leads, the ball bounces over Culver and goes out of bounds. He never touched it. So it'll be a penalty against USC and they'll re-kick. Jimmy, there's a lot of emotion in this college football game, but this is something a quarterback, particularly a young quarterback like Todd Marinovich, doesn't want to get involved in. After his success, you never do like do that when you got a team down. He hit Kolakowski with his helmet and he points at him. No room for that, particularly in a game like this. Well, since the pregame warm-ups, there has been finger pointing, explosions by these teams. The emotions coming out. So USC re-kicks from the 30. Rodriguez obviously staying away from the rocket, but he damages USC once again. Another penalty, and they'll have to kick from the 25. And even though Rocket Ismail doesn't have the ball in his hands, he is affecting this game because you have to kick the ball away from him, and you get two penalties like that. And now Larry Smith is going to be talking to Rodriguez, and maybe now they kick it high, but any way you slice it, Notre Dame's going to get excellent field position with 9.01 left. Hey, I'd be very tempted to just boot it as hard as you can now because Ismail is standing at the 30. Yeah. And Rodriguez has the wind at his back. They have kicked four of them out of bounds. Lou Holt said, our guys believe we have the best kick return team in the country and we are going to make big plays happen. 
That's indisputable, really. You think about it. Yep. You know, they, it's amazing. It's an attitude to special teams. They start with special teams film every Sunday. It's the first thing the coaches look at are special teams. The first game plan for the next week is special teams. It's just an emphasis and I think a philosophy and an attitude. Wallace for USC scored the first touchdown of the game. There's also another first for the Notre Dame special teams. They are the first ones to go through the Friday night <laughs> smorgasbord line. That's what they line, set, yeah. right? They get first cracks at it. They get treated right, they perform right. They did it. He kicked it right over the Rockets' head. He saw it. And it's into the end zone and a touchback. Notre Dame will take it out at the 20. What a game of point-counterpoint, Jim Marinovich, and now it's Tony Rice's turn. Almost just suckered the Irish into that one. They kicked two out of bounds, and they just booted right over his head, and Notre Dame has it at the 20. And again next week, another good one for you. Alabama, unbeaten on the year against Penn State, a team that has really surged since an opening loss against Virginia. And Alabama's been scoring points all season long. Penn State, the leading scoring defense in the country. Blair Thomas is back and healthy. It's going to be fun. Penn State 5-1 on the year. And with nine minutes to go, and the Irish down by three. First and ten from their own 20. Ismail in the backfield gets the carry and fights his way to the 28-yard line. Mark Carrier held on for life. You know, you think of, of Ismail as a small guy, a kick returner. Well, he's 5'10", 175 pounds, but he is a tough runner. He will break some tackles. He was a running back in high school, as a matter of fact. Some good blocks there. Tim Ryan, number 52, made a nice block. So did Mike Brennan. And then it was the determination of Ismail to pick up eight yards. Second and two. Waters back in at the tailback. Johnson bursting forward, and I believe he has the first down. Yes, he does at the 31-yard line. This is a lineman's game from here on in, Jim. Eight minutes, 18 seconds left in the fourth quarter. It's going to be offensive linemen and defensive linemen that are going to win and lose this football game. Yes, somebody's going to come up with a big play, but it's one of those linemen that are going to set it up. One of the defensive linemen back in there for USC is Dan Owens. He has been hobbled here in the second half. He's back in the game. At nose tackle. First and ten for Notre Dame. Rice has it. And he picks up six. We are at Notre Dame Stadium. USC and Notre Dame meeting for the 61st time. You could say through the years the greatest national rivalry in all of college football. Jim Nance along with Pat Hayden and John Dockery. Ninth ranked Southern Cal had the edge early. Led by 10 at halftime. Back came Notre Dame to take the lead in this quarter. But once challenged, USC drives back and has regained the lead here in the game's final seven minutes. On the line, the defending national champions with an 18-game winning streak and six straight years victories against the Trojans. Pat, some of these seniors at USC do not want to end their career having never beaten Notre Dame. Well, it's such an important game for Southern Cal players. You have two traditional rivals but in UCLA and Notre Dame, but you don't want to graduate from that school having never beaten the Fighting Irish. The game is just so special, I think, for particular for the seniors. Talking to guys like Marinovich, the younger players on the team, they said they want to send their seniors off with a win the last time around. This has been a game very much of big plays. Todd Marinovich, as a freshman quarterback, has played phenomenally well. But it's been a point-counterpoint. Every time USC has come up with a big play, Notre Dame has matched them. Notre Dame certainly has up the rushing total in the second half. And how about Lou Holtz? Oh, he's just run wild in the second half. Wow. There's my Heisman vote. Yeah. He had only 500 in the first half. This is yards pacing in the game today. Holtz had around 500 yards just before the intermission. He's really worked it up and got his ground game going just like his team here in the second half. He's always been noted as a fourth quarter guy. <laughs> Here's a big third down play for him. Third and inches. Out of this wishbone, Johnson ran for the touchdown. 
He gets the carry again, same play, same spot. No touchdown, but he has the first down. But do you see how low he runs, Jim? There is no way that you're going to stop Anthony Johnson for a loss. He's six feet, 220 pounds, and runs low to the ground. He is always moving forward, always gaining yards. I don't think I've ever seen him be tackled for a loss. He's one of the guys that deserves to break a long one like the one he had because he gets so many of the tough yards inside and every once in a while to get rewarded with a long gainer. First and ten, Rice now gets away and is down and out of bounds by Ernest Spears. Well, you know, again, we talked about great players playing well in big games. Anthony Johnson there saved Tony Rice from being sacked. He was about to get sacked from the outside, but Johnson drew a key block that allowed Rice to escape out of the pocket. That's another thing Rice gives you. Great escapability. He leads this team in rushing. Keep wondering if he'll break one like he did in the 88 clash. He ran 65 yards in that one at the Coliseum for a touchdown to Tony Rice. Second down and seven. Fakes in the line and he's looking long. He's got the rocket at the 30. Caught at the 15 yard line. Cleveland Coulter got a hand on him to stop him. Clever play by Notre Dame as they line Ismail up in the backfield. Ordinary the flanker. He's at the right halfback position there. The play action fake freezes people inside, and Ishmael, number 25, sneaks out of the backfield, and the, when the game is on the line, a well-thrown ball there by Rice to Ismail. Well, he can beat you as a punt returner, as a kick returner, as a runner, and as a pass receiver out of the backfield. 40 yards on the play. First and 10 from the 15 with 5.30 left. And trailing by three. Side of the 10, and he will score. Touchdown, Notre Dame. Attempt the extra point. Good from the left side. Inside left. And it's a four-point lead for Notre Dame. Tony Rice's last game against Southern Cal, and he has responded beautifully. Every time he has been challenged, Jim, in this game, he has responded. Marinovich leads his team for a score, and Rice comes right back. And take a look at the option play. This is what makes Tony Rice so dangerous. A little fake here with his hands. He fakes like he's going to pitch it. Freezes a couple of defenders. Right there. A couple guys went right by him. Then he cuts back. Has the speed to do that. And then the determination and power as he breaks one tackle. Two tackles. And then the determination. That is what college football is about. Smith helplessly watching as the Rocket actually smiling oddly enough. Well, I think you have to respect a guy like that, Jim. You have to respect the Tony Rice as much as you hate to see him do that to you. You respect great players. Since he was going to break one, that's his second touchdown of the day. And he also had that enormous fourth down effort, fourth and three in the third quarter, to set up the touchdown by Waters. Still plenty of time for Todd Marinovich. 518 remaining. USC has two timeouts left. Hendrick does not get it airborne. Mooney skip, uh, scoops it up and runs to the 37. Good field position to start for the Trojans. Tomorrow. 
And if you're Todd Brnovich here, you still must remain patient as he's been all game long. He's in the shotgun formation. They're going to win it with his left arm throwing the football. He's got three receivers. Scott is the extra man. Brnovich long across the middle. Jackson inside of the 40 at the 37-yard line. Right over a leaping Ned Bolkar. That pass was perfect. And going with the no huddle offense trying to prevent the substitutions by and the nickel defense by Notre Dame. Beautiful touch by Marinovich and per terrific protection, Jim. Watch the protection that he got. Got all day to get rid of the ball. Picked up 26 yards, now going short to Urbans. And he's tackled at the 32. Andre Jones on the tackle. Brnovich plays really with remarkable nonchalance. He's a guy who grew up in Southern California, played in a lot of big high school games, had a storied high school career, was recruited by virtually everyone across the country. And he has done an absolutely sensational job in his first year. Well, he has set the school record today for both pass attempts and completions. He's also thrown three touchdowns. Second down pass play to Wellman. Another first down for USC at the 23-yard line. A gain of 10. Remember when Gary Wellman ran the post route, Jim, for the touchdown? Well, this time it's the same route. Jackson's in motion. He runs to the flat. Wellman fakes the post, then runs the curl route. So we've seen three different plays from Wellman off of that same action. It looks the same, but it really isn't. You know, Jim, talking about Marinovich, I think he will be, when he finishes at USC, the quarterback that everyone else is measured by at Southern Cal. You mean no more Pat Hayden? Oh, yeah. <laughs> they forgot me a long time ago. He is outstanding. And he has shown what kind of talent we'll see for three more years. And the completion to Galbraith gets the football to the 15. If you're Larry Smith, you're thinking this is a four-point game, so you must get the ball into the end zone. This may be the last time that you have the ball. So you're in the four-down zone. You have four. You're not going to think even think about a field goal. You're going to go for the four. You're going to go for the first down every time you have to. Now it's second down. Call it about two. Just short of two yards. Needs to get. With a 13, Colt runs for it and has the first down as we near the three-minute mark. Pat, you said it, USC has two timeouts. They had to use one in the third quarter on a mix-up on the punt. Jim, I think for a passing team which USC has been this game, it is easier to score from the 12 or 13 yard line where they are now than if they move the ball inside the five yard line because you have a lot more room to operate. And a new set of downs to operate with. Irvin's the lone back. It's Wallace to the right. And Marinovich keeps it and gets to the seven. Tackled by Ned Volkar. Yes, you get closer to that end zone, and that field gets smaller. Now we'll really see what you're talking about here for USC with the ball at the seven-yard line. And we talked about Tony Rice being a physical player, and Todd Rinovich has impressed me with how physical he has been. Ordinarily, you don't think of the quarterback position of being like that, but both these quarterbacks have played the position, position with great physicalness and force today. Second down and five. Yeah. Running down the line, now looking to throw, and it's over everyone's head. John Jackson was in that corner. They actually had two receivers down there, Jackson and Wellman. Was that a mistake? No, it, it, it may have been a mistake, but Marinovich did the right thing in getting rid of the ball and out of the end zone. Don't force that ball. He's had the three interceptions. And now for Larry Smith, he is faced with a third and five. Now he's got to be thinking, I have two downs to get that five yards. Do I have a better chance of getting it throwing the football or running maybe Urbans or Holt inside? Do I take two runs or two passes? 
Notre Dame possesses not only that 18-game win streak, the longest in the nation, but they have beaten USC the last six years, the longest win streak in this series history. USC trying to go in for the win. And on third down, in great time, Marinovich throws, and it's incomplete, out of bounds. Wallace, he did not have a foot down. He caught it, but he did not get the foot down. You need one in college football. Good coverage by the secondary. The ball was held for a long time as Murnovich tried to wait for somebody to come open. He finally found Wallace, but clearly he did not come down with a foot down. So now you're faced with a fourth and five, and you have to think Southern Cal should call a timeout here, I would guess, to think about it. Well, Panda, they will also got to consider if they don't get it, they would have Notre Dame backed up and could stop the clock two times. And they might use those and force a punt. So fourth and five. Marinovich. Incomplete. Football was almost intercepted. It's actually a break, perhaps, for USC that it wasn't intercepted because now Notre Dame takes over at the 7 instead of bringing it out to the 20 on the touchback. You're absolutely right, but this defense of Barry Alvarez, the coordinator, rises to responsibility. First, it was pressure that made Marinovich give her the ball a little bit before he wanted to, but four, four blue jerseys around Joel Scott. A game of emotion and the reaction of Todd Marinovich. has been a day of emotions in South Bend. And it's not over yet. Oh yeah, you're right. A minute and 40 seconds left. Again, Pat. Two timeouts. Football was at the seventh. That's exactly right. An interception. The ball could have been brought out to the 20. They're falling down. They would not have run it out. But now Southern Cal has to stuff them quickly, use their timeouts, and force a punt, get one more shot. Handoff, just for a yard gain, goes Ricky Waters. And there's the timeout, promptly called, promptly called by Southern Cal. One timeout left. USC trying to get the football back, trailing by four. A welcome back to the house that Rockney built for the final one minute, 35 seconds. Number one, Notre Dame trying to hold on here with a 28-24 lead against Southern Cal. Here was a fourth down play, Pat, for USC moments ago, trying to go in for the lead. And they were trying to run a crossing route, expecting the man-for-man -man coverage, but D1 Francisco, the safety, really played like a zone and made the reaction, read the eyes of Brunovich and made the play. of the senior on the USC side, Scott Galbraith. Realizing he may not get a chance to get the football back and beat Notre Dame once in his career before he's finished. Second down, the Rocket. Ismail for only two. And the last timeout is utilized by USC. Freshman quarterback Marinovich looks to the clock, sees the 131 on display. And it comes now to a third down play for Notre Dame. If they don't get it, they'll have to punt out of their own end zone. A year ago, Tony Rice threw the ball out of the end zone for a big play to Rocket Ismail. But what Southern Cal must do here is prevent the first down, and then Larry Smith is presented with a dilemma. Do you go for the block or the return? In his career, Larry Smith has always gone for the block. He's had a remarkable record. His teams have had a remarkable record of blocking punts at Arizona and at Southern Cal. Tommy Jackson has had a record-setting day for catches by a USC receiver. Are you suggesting that Notre Dame's going to throw here out of the end zone? They did it a year ago with great success at this moment. Now, with a timeout, if you're a defensive backfield coach, Bobby April of Southern California is telling Mark Carrier his safety at least to stay deep. First thing you talk about throwing out of your end zone, own end zone for Notre Dame. It's shades of Tom Clements against Alabama in the Sugar Bowl. 
coach Eric Parsegan. Third down and nine. Notre Dame from its own nine. Running the wishbone. Rice won't get the first down. Notre Dame will punch. Now, USC, we talked to their people yesterday. They felt they could mock a punt. But when you have a hot quarterback like Marinovich, you don't want to risk roughing the kicker. Hey, the wind has subsided substantially here in the last hour. It's just a mere zephyr up there. But still, Notre Dame kicks into that mild, mild breeze. Hendrick, a freshman punter, standing at the goal line. Run hard, we'll snap it back. Put a little pressure. And a good kick. Wallace on the return. He's in the Notre Dame territory at the 48-yard line. 42 seconds left for the Trojans. And no timeouts remaining. Remember, Southern Cal has a no-huddle offense, which is part of their regular scheme. This is not something new for them. They did this in the first half, remember. But with no timeouts, they have to make sure that the receivers get out of bounds after the catch. Now two college football classic teams coming down to the final seconds in South Bend. Marinovich throws. Gotta be a penalty. That's gotta be. It is. It's grounding. Kowalkowski was in on the quarterback. And there was no receiver in the area. Kowalkowski has really come on this second half to put pressure on Morenovic. He is their rush in, number 37. Morenovic ducks outside because Zorich showed quickly, and then it was Kowalkowski who made the play, and an easy call back there for the referee. That's a loss of down. And they spot the ball at the 34-yard line. Second down and 29, John Jackson in the middle of the field, and the clock will run. Notre Dame is giving away the middle of the field and just protecting the boundaries. Southern Cal inside of 20 seconds. Third down and 17. Low snap on the shotgun. Marinovich now is hit as he throws it. Hit by Kowalkowski. He may have hurt his arm. The incompletion stops the clock for one last play. Well, this has been a game of determination and guys fighting and scratching to help their teams win. But Scott Kolakowski, on the last two plays, has done a remarkable job of getting close to the quarterback. And he did get up, looked as though his left shoulder taking a pretty good whack. Notre Dame trying to finalize its gut check in the second half. Last play of the game. And Marinovich throws it up. Incomplete. The Irish win. straight years. Notre Dame over Southern Cal. The win streaks at 19 as we go to John Dockery. Yes, Coach, you talked about a gut check at the half. You seem to have gotten it. We got one and we bounced back, but I got to give Southern Cal all the credit in the world. They were played absolutely super game. I can't say enough. We had five turnovers. It was just a great classy game. We have great respect for Southern Cal. You know, Lou, you were talking about the character of this team also. What did you find out today? Well, we, we play well. We make some mistakes. We're not real pretty, but we play like Notre Dame should play. Can you take a sigh of relief and smile after this great victory? 
No, I really can't. Uh, I just have, I know how Southern Cal feels. I have too much respect for them because they, they're a class operation. I'm very proud of our team, but I can be very proud of Southern Cal as well. 19 straight, congratulations, Coach Jim Nance and Pat Hayden, back to you. All right, Doc, and a salute to the student body. And they raise their helmets in honor of the students who helped cheer them to victory. They cheer from that end zone that provided the game-winning touchdown by Tony Rice. Rice dashing in from 15 yards out as the number one ranked Notre Dame Irish extend their winning streak to 19 in a row.